Oh shit. Oh shit. 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 I hit the wrong button, man. I'm starting up a new show. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see the invite. Damn, I'm sorry about that. God damn. Yeah. Do you see it? Okay, people starting to show up. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, y'all. I think I'm live. Okay, I'm live, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, man. I'm sitting up here rushing, hitting the wrong buttons, man. So, uh, man, I hope. Uh, I, and I saw MD. He said he was driving. Oh man, sound engineers are pissed. Hey, sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> oh gosh, man. Um, Yanga just called me, so I got him. So y'all send this to Angel. I know Angel knows the routine, man. Sorry about that, golly, man. Sorry about that. I, damn, hitting the wrong buttons. I'm just dark, and it's just I'm just hitting buttons. So let's get everybody back in here. So who did I lose? Let's see. Looks like I lost. Uh, I lost several people. Okay. So damn, Black Sun. I know, man. I'm hit. Man, hit the wrong damn button, man. I, oh man, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking, man. I'm sorry. Um, Tell Angel to come back on. Uh, I just told Yanga. Let me send Yanga another invite. Because apparently there's a little delay. Yanga and Chroma. Boom. I need to get Angel's uh, email. Boom. What is this? Okay, that's gone. It's all good. Yeah, man. I'm I'm hitting the wrong buttons, man. I'm just, damn. Okay. All right, we back in the house. Well, we got half the people back. Gonna be hot. <laughs> yeah, man, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, man. I just okay. Well, got Yang back. Boom. Now we just need Angel back, and we good. Oh, Angel's back. Damn. Okay, y'all. All right, y'all. Okay, you got got it all back together. Yeah, got it back together. Sorry, but I hit the wrong damn button. Look, you know, my yeah, we phone, know it. Yeah. I'm trying to get off my phone and get on the internet, and it just, oh, man. Oh, I won't do that no more. <laughs> All right, Angel, sorry about the interruption. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I was just, just talking about uh, my old school days you know, and, and uh, my experience in these, these different uh, ideologies and strategies. Which, mm -hmm. what I have learned is that there's too many people doing too many things, and that's not going to never work. It's not going to mm -hmm. never. It's not. Gonna, it's not going. It's not going to. It's not going to work. You can feel good about yourself and your little group. What do you, what what do you mean too many people doing too many things? What we have too many people. What do you mean by that? It's, you, you have a group of people that claim uh, I'm I'm for the people, I'm doing this for the people. So you so you claim. Are you doing it for the people or are you doing it for yourself? Are you an explorer of the people just like everybody else? You're not really looking out for the people because are you talking to the people? Or you want them to be what you think they should be? Or are you really looking out for the people? So we have a lot of different folks doing a whole lot of different stuff. Even if you go back to the 1960s or prior, we got all these different organizations, plural. And they're doing all these different things and they are in competition with one another. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being in competition, mm -hmm. everybody's in competition with one another. It's not going to work. Yeah, everybody feels good. It might make you feel good with you, what you're doing, and you will have a certain amount of success. 
But those little tiddlywink things mm -hmm. that you're able to do will not affect and have no effect and can't do nothing for the 40 plus million people in this country who are different, who are diverse. We are Muslims, we are Christians, mm -hmm. we are agnostics, we are Republicans, we're Democrats, we are short, we're tall. Some of, us <coughs> like, some of us like bean pie, some of us don't. Some of us have a, believe we have some kind of connection to Africa. A lot of us don't. You're dealing with a group of people that's very diverse. Mm -hmm. And these things that we work on is for our own personal wanting. They're not for the people because the people are extremely diverse. So that is not going to work. Mm -hmm. So don't say that you're for the people and you're not diverse because the people that you're targeting is diverse. They're not pro-black. They're not Mm -hmm. They're not what you want them to be or what you think they are to be. They're not those things. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. If you truly are interested in changing the condition and you really want to have a strategy to move the people, you have to go where they are at. You can't make them be who you want them to be. You got to go where they're at. Mm -hmm. And even if you go where they're at, it's still going to be a problem because... We have diversity. We have a diversity conflict. Everybody wants something different. It's just like if you take your family out. I heard Cat Williams, was it the comedian Cat Williams? He said he has like 10 children mm -hmm. in his family. I saw him mm -hmm. uh, doing a stand up. He was like, Do you know how it is to feed 10 people in a house? Because everybody is different. Yeah. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. But Cat Williams loved his family. So he has to take consideration of all the differences in the house. And that's a hell of a mm -hmm. thing to do that. Now, you go to these dictatorship families, like my grandfather, when he put whatever out on the table, if you don't eat, he don't give a damn you star. That's what you're going to eat today. And you're going to eat mm -hmm. it. They'll beat your ass and make you eat it. <laughs> you know, that's how it was back mm -hmm. when I was mm -hmm. old school stuff. You didn't have no choice. Whatever you were for dinner, that's what you had. Better not catch you throwing no mm -hmm. food away. Man, my people didn't throw nothing away. They crack open chicken bones, mm -hmm. eat the power out of it, eat the core of the apples. They didn't throw nothing away. I'm like, God damn. I'm shocked the hogs had something to eat. <laughs> you know, when they have nothing. Well, when we're looking at a solution for the people who are diverse, I mean, I agree with a lot of the different things people say, you know, what they present. I, I want, I wouldn't mind being separated, but I know that the masses of the people, they're not, they're not interested in running to Africa or the, the separation talk or whatever. This is their life. I'm an American citizen. I just Thank want you. to go to work, have my kids and Thank die. You. That's all, that's their, that's the mindset that you're dealing with right now. You only have a small minority who are on board with, they're not, they're not, the, the mass of the people aren't advanced as we are. And they're not going to move, they're not willing to do what's necessary. This is their life. So my thing is, well, you cannot give a, a, a child, an infant, meat. They have to start off with milk. So the Mississippi campaign is about bringing the diversity under un, one umbrella and giving the people milk, little by look, I understand that this process, which will probably take us to the places we want to go, but not in our lifetime, we we'll all be gone. But the process begins, it will probably take the people where we, where we want them to go because it would give them that sense of, of freedom. They never had that before. They don't, they never live a life of independence where they control resources where they make laws that people obey to my knowledge there's not one law on books that black folks in this country made and people obey we always serving we always following under somebody else so the mississippi campaign gives us a chance like training wheels to put ourselves in the business so to give us a taste give the people a taste they might like it. They might like the wow. These folks obeying our laws. 
understand, look at our school, look what we built. This is what we done. Instead of always follow, this gives us a chance to show ourselves then we can actually build a nation because we run this, we run this uh, state here. We make the laws and we took a poverty stricken state and now it's wealthy and the other states are trying to copy us. We got it going on. It gives us a tape. So now they are willing to fight for something because they built something. They built a legacy, something to fight for. How are you going to inspire, motivate somebody with just talk and they don't have nothing of substance to fall back upon? They don't have nothing to fight. That's why George Washington and all these other people and wherever you find revolutionary, they fight real, real hard because they, they know what freedom and liberation is and they're willing to die on it. We're not... We, we as a people don't have the mindset we're willing to die on it because we never had that. How are you going to fight for something you never knew? It's just like when these crackers take your, your taxes out your check before you even see it. You know that how much you made, but when they take that money out your check and you never see it, you really don't trip off of that much because you never it never was in your hand. You never yeah. saw it. But you'd be happy as hell at tax return time you remember, I mean, you talk such and such, you may remember when, you know, tax return time. So I, I'm not about trying to argue and debate nobody over anything because I understand that when you're dealing with diversity, then you have to have a diverse uh, plan of action. And these strategies and a lot of the things that i hear is not diverse you want the people to be what you want them to be and if you if they become what you want them to be you will be successful problem is the 40 million in this country they're not they're not going to do it there's nothing you can do there's nothing i can do there's nothing there's nothing nobody can do about that they are who they are now angel uh trevor said what's the difference between this and what anon is proposing well, actually, I don't even really know what A9 is proposing. I really don't. Okay, okay, fair but enough. But I, I heard, enough. you know, the, the basic or, or 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 the short end of it is basically, uh, correct me, it's basically moving to, to Africa, trying to build some kind of reality in, in another foreign land or, or, or something. All right. Well, well, the difference is <clears throat> this is not religious-based at all. Oh, I'm I'm down with that. <laughs> this is not religious based. This is purely political moves. Right. This has nothing to do with my uh, personal wants because I have certain wants, something things that I would like to see, but this has nothing to do with what I personally want. This is about creating something that the whole can benefit and shouldn't have a problem with it because I'm not trying to ask you to to uh, pray to Jesus. Well, I'm glad you said that because when, uh, hey, MD, jump on any time, man. I mean, I know you're working, but we definitely want to get your take before I, you know, start. Yeah. Hey, I, I can't, I, I can barely hear y'all, man. For whatever reason, I, I can't get my headset to pair with the stream yard. So, oh, damn. I'm I... jumping in, man, saying peace. Okay, okay. Appreciate that. Right, can, can, can you hear me pretty good? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, because it's on, it's on speakerphone. Yeah, we got you. We you coming in pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna hang around, man. If I get an opportunity to uh, to jump in, I will. But right now, like I said, I can barely hear y'all. I want to try to get back here and try to get my wire headset. But I ain't getting no chance. But y'all keep it pushed. Okay. All right. Man, we got uh Trevor. Man, thank. You. Hey, what's up, Trevor? Peace, 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 peace. Can you guys peace? Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, Angel? Yeah, peace. I got, I got, a, I got a question for you. Let me, let me jump in real quick. Um, so I know, you, I know you're not familiar with what Anon was proposing, but listening to your plan, it, it sounds, it, it basically sounds identical, except ones in Africa and ones in America. Do you think black people mm. have? Because, because when you mention this plan, I'm assuming you're talking about black people, because you keep yes. referencing the forty, the forty million. Do you think black? Do you think there's a possibility for a better succession rate on this land or in another land? Succession? Could you clarify? 
this lane, like, this so, lane, this lane, this lane. So yeah, so so your your plan. So if 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 we separate and and then we follow we follow the plan that you're laying out, do you think it would work better if we were here or in Africa? And 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 just and just by the way, I I agree with what you're saying. I I, I think we should separate, but I just don't think we're on the same mindset to make it happen to make it a reality. Yes. Hey, I can I can answer that, Talik. Okay. Uh, so. It's got to be this land. We have no political ties to Africa at all. If that answers your question. Do we have political, political ties, ties here? In America. East, south, north, west. Do, do we have real political ties here? Uh, uh, according to the uh, Freedmen's Act, yeah, we do. It's, all, it's up to I, us to, to, to disaggregate. I... I think that would be my my when talking about when listening to you guys, that would be my concern. What would be the difference between black Mississippi America and the America we live in now? I mean, neocolonialism is real. And from what I've seen, when you put Negroes, black faces in white places and don't change the system, niggas tend to be worse than white folks. Exactly. Uh, uh, elaborate on that. What, what do you mean as far as. Putting black like it, are, in white face, elaborate on that. Are we still using the same system? You know, like I live in Atlanta, you know, and I'm sure that you and and not being from Atlanta, Atlanta was my first taste of neocolonialism. It was my first taste of seeing all of these black people, but they were emulating the same oppressive system. So face, so skin, you know, like they say, all my skin folk ain't my kin folk. So Skin complexion. If we if we have the same system that's oppressing us now, what's going to be the? Are we relying on because they're melanated people that the system that this uh, is going to be different than what we're what we're up under now? That's what I'm saying. Is that the assumption? I mean, is it the same exact system, just black people running it? So, tell me the difference between the system and how the system is being used. Tell me the difference. Because the system could be used to in, in any way possible. Uh, the I don't know. The for the system itself. I, I would disagree with that. I don't think a system that was founded on criminality, that was founded on injustice, land appropriation, murder, rape, kidnap, robbery, and slavery could ever be a system that would allow upward mobility for all people. A system like that has to have a downtrodden class. It has to have a disenfranchised, dismarginalized class to be the fuel of the of the system of capitalism. You always have to have a lower economic society that will be willing to do the bullshit work or if not willing, forced into a situation where they have to do uh, menial work and never have the opportunity for upward mobility. Okay, so so if I if I understand you correctly, you said the system itself. I want you to define what the system is, but I think you already did that. So the system is capitalism itself, right? Yeah, as the way practiced by America, as the way America practices it. Well, then that means the system can be changed. You said as the way it's practiced by America. Yeah. So I, is that, the system capitalism saying. or is the system being manipulated by who's ever over here? Uh, the system is capitalism as okay. practiced by America. I mean, so that's what I mean that uh, the, are you doing the same? You're an, basically answering the question. Shall is it the same system? Are, are, are we bad. tweaking? Are, are we tweaking the system? You know what I'm saying? So, is it the same so the system, system or are we changing the system? So the system is capitalism. Yeah, as practiced by America. Start capitalism overall. Oh, wait, wait. But let's say let's say as practice, let's start with the way America practices it. But yeah, for me, capitalism overall. But I'll just start with the way America practices it. Because what it does, it leads into people like to go to the last step. Well, how do you get around capitalism? Then that goes into a whole nother struggle about socialism, capital, or any other economic thing. But let's talk about just some of the ways America uh oppresses and suppresses and uses capitalism uh, in the use of capitalism i'm sorry go ahead brother hello 
Yeah, I don't think he I don't think he heard you. Uh oh. Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I, yeah, I can hear you. Like I said, I can barely hear because I'm on speakerphone. Yes, sir. Um like did somebody hear me? Could they No, no, we like, we heard you. Yeah. So basically I I'm saying like are we changing the way that America practices capital, the way that the system is now? Are we moving to Mississippi doing the exact same thing? Or are we willing to tweak the system at the very least? If not get rid of the whole system, are we willing to tweak the shit that is intentionally designed to keep human beings disenfranchised and dismarginalized from participating in the system? And with America, we know pr uh, predominantly or specifically, that is us and brown people. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about black people right now. So we know America targets us to be that fuel for the system. Are we going to do the same things? Or are we cha are we saying, okay, you know, we're going to go here. We're going to start, at the very least, voting shit out or outlawing shit. Or we're going to change the system. So is that what we're looking at? Changing the system? You can't. You can't. So I, I'm going to ask them. So the system is, I, I just want to make sure I got you right. The system is capitalism, correct? Correct. The way that the people here have changed the system is not success, uh, successful for the system itself, correct? Co the way the, the people have changed the system is not successful for the system itself. Is that what you were saying? Correct. Uh, so, not successful, so not successful the for the black participants. The it's not successful for black. The system's the problem. The system is the problem. The system is designed to intentionally hinder and obstruct black upward mobility. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, I think y'all heard me to hear. Let me give an example. And uh, people always hear me use this example. A convicted felon. Now, you have a convicted felon that will go do their time physically. And then once released, they may be under a contract called parole or probation. They're on paper and they're going to pay that faithfully. And once they finish that, here's a big unjust or injustice by the system. They are what's on their record is called a felony. And so they are regulated to certain jobs. They can't get certain jobs because of a felony. Now they physically paid their dues. They've been on paper and economically, financially paid their dues, but they're still regulated to certain jobs. And in Georgia, you can't even live in certain places if you have a felony. That's what I'm talking about, a system. So what is that for? That is to keep uh, people who have fallen under, largely black people, it is to keep them regulated to McDonald's, Kroger's, to bullshit menial jobs that fuel the capitalist system so that the people who have buck danced in some kind of way, and I, I'm not going to say everybody that didn't get caught, but some kind of way still have alleged rights as so-called citizens, but we're just denizens, but so-called citizens of the system, they have rights and they have the opportunity for upward mobility. But what about those people who are disenfranchised and dismarginalized? There's no an opportunity for upward mobility, nor is there an opportunity for generational wealth, therefore giving their children uh, opportunities in colleges and other things to be uh, competitive. And capitalism is what? Private industry or private businesses based on a competitive model. And they take the competitive edge out of the black community by bullshit like that. And that's just one type of shit that they do. So yeah, the system. That's what I'm talking about, a system that intentionally targets. Hey, let me, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm listening. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I broke you off. Can you continue? No, that was it. That was it. MD, are you, can you still hear us? Oh, he yeah, I can hear you, Black Song. Okay, I, yeah, um, yeah, I had concluded that that was it. That was just in one of the examples of an injustice in the system. You know, to to recap, a person pays their debt to society physically, 
They come home and pay their debt to society contractually, as well as economically by paying into the parole or the probation. And still, after all of that, and uh, their debt is alleged to be served, they are still denied full participation of citizenry. They can't bear firearms. Some of them can't vote. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're denied full participation back uh, into the state to be a citizen. So fuck yeah, revolution is the only solution for some people. So, I mean, okay. that's what we talk about. A so, system. So let me ask that you a quick that type of thing has to be changed. Okay, let me ask you a question. That example that you just gave, within the system itself, is that is that something that's federal or state? Did you hear that, Yinga? Oh, he dropped off. Damn. Okay. Yeah, I, I knew he was breaking up. I, I thought it was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. I was hearing him breaking up. Okay, okay. I mean, um, actually, I can answer that question, but, I mean, y'all want to let – um. Give uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You go around and say you can come back to me because I don't okay, want to be okay. holding phone in my hand. <laughs> yeah, because I think I know where you're going, MD. But I'm not gonna spoil it for you. But I already know the answer to that. But I mean, I'm gonna save that for you, MD, because I already know what you're gonna say. All right, all right yeah, just go around. Yeah. Just go okay, around. Okay. Hey, but now, but but black son, black son, real quick. I don't I okay. don't think um because I was listening to what Yanga was saying, and I I don't think that that would matter in in this proposed system or what Anon is proposing because um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the new system where, where we're in charge, everybody would basically get a right. clean slate, wouldn't they? Right. Yeah. So, right. so it wouldn't matter. It, it wouldn't matter if capitalism kept you down in, in this particular system, because now you're getting a chance in a new system. Are you, are you talking about uh, anonymous Hebrew? Uh, well, no, uh, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about both of you guys' plan. Well, well, I, I I say to that in our plan, we most we are most definitely going to be participating in the American system of life. I'm not saying that we're not, and and I can go deeper into that, like after y'all chop it up. But we'll get into it. Can I say something here? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Andrew. Then we'll get in Yami one after thing, uh, one thing, and then uh, that's important. For me, I don't know about anybody else. In this country, soul brothers and sisters, black people, however you want to, to call us, you always have a group of people who want to tell us what we should do, how to think, how to take a dump, what you're going to call yourself. You are African, you, you are Hebrew. Nobody never comes to us and say and asks us, what do you want? Hmm. We always want to, we always are in a position where we are forced, basically, you know, our leaders. I don't remember, I, I love Malcolm X, everybody know I, I love Malcolm X, but I don't remember me voting for Malcolm X as, no, as my leader. I don't remember voting for Jesse Jackson as my leader. See, that's our problem. I don't remember voting for Louis Farrakhan as my leader. Somebody, because they become popular or whatever, oh, he's a black leader. I ain't going to lie. This is going to get bad. This is who you talking about finna beat me up no, tonight, you're not, right, Yanga? You're not a, yeah. a black leader. You're just somebody. Uh, you're just the head of the Rainbow Coalition or, or, the, or, the, or, the, or, your, or the Nation of Islam or whatever. You're not no black leader. Nobody comes and asks us nothing. It's just the media or whoever just pushes somebody on us. So why are we shocked that the, the, the people are not progressing forward because there's no leadership because ain't nobody asked them nothing. We should have, we should have like a, uh, uh, we should have some type of meeting where we say, look, we need a but leader. Snap, no, no. Who's the we white need, leader? Need leader. We Why need we need a leader? Who's who's white America's leader? We need a leader. We need a leader, and we gonna ask the people. All the organizations put Farcon on the ballot. Black side, you can put your, yourself on the ballot. Everybody, we <laughs> can put on but the snap, ballot. But no. let me ask you this. People, let let me ask you this. Who is and every, who and is? We debate and we do the thing just like in the American system. Who gonna become president? And let the people let, decide. 
who they want to. And then, just like the American people, yeah. they don't like Biden, but this nation supports Joe Biden as president. And then you start moving forward. That's how you you need to ask our people, what do you want? How do you feel? But, but, Instead of forcing something Angel, on somebody. Angel, because, snub, snub. Let me ask you this. Because, Let me ask you this, though. Because you want, Who's the leader for white America? The leader of white America. Uh, freeze. Can you? No, you good. You good. This country, mm -hmm. this nation, is Joe Biden. He's the president of this nation. No, 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 no. Not of America. Of white, because Joe you Biden, have some Negroes. No, hey, Joe, Joe Biden, Biden is, is their the, president. Who you is, like it who not, is Joe the Biden, leader of? Joe Biden is the president so of the every, United States. So let he me ask you this, Angel Snuff. No. He controls the so military. Every white, when he every gives white order to person, bring the military down on you. Every white person, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me just, I, I hear what they say he can do. I, I hear what they say he can do. He couldn't even stop them white folks from running up in the Capitol. So ain't shit he can really do. I'm not, so let going, me to, ask I'm you not going to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to even debate and argue at that point because we're Good. talking some ludicrous. So stuff. all white America. Let me. Let me ask you this, Angus. White America does not so have all no leader white like America, that. You are an American citizen so in this all country. All white America agrees on Joe Biden. No, they don't. We know they don't do that. We know they don't. But if this country comes under attack. They're going to rally behind the, the, the president of this let, nation. Can you that's, hear me, though? Yeah, yeah, we can hear No, let, that's let, not let, true, let, actually. No, okay. it's not. And that part is let not me, true. Let, exactly. So let me, let me say this. So right now why against do, white, if white, white America doesn't have my thing? Yeah, you're so up, let, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Up, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I don't want to argue. So let me let me say this real thing. quick because my connection not, is, is what terrible. What you're talking about is not, so, is not even so, real. Yeah, what you're talking about is not even real. Are you trying to say that Jocelyn within itself is a leader? What you say? What? What I'm saying is this. Are you trying to say capital, uh, Can capitalism? Capitalism in itself is a leader? No, I'm not saying that. Here's what I'm saying because my I keep going. I know my thing keeps going out. I think it's preposterous to put on us. What no other people in the world has done. Nobody on this panel can tell me who the Mexican leader is. Nobody on here can tell me who the white people's leader is. But we sit around and allow people to tell us who our leader is or to actually wait on a damn leader. I say we get out of the Masonic complex. Stop waiting on this one great charismatic figure to come down from the clouds and give us all the mystical answers. We are all collectively responsible for one another, ourselves first and That's foremost, and one another and the direction of our said. race. No, 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 hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. You were saying, I thought you, that's why I said my internet was going in and out. I thought you were saying we, we, I thought you were saying we should vote. I'm not going to be on the screen. Hold on, hold on, brother, hold on, give me, give me a minute, give me a minute, give me a minute. I I promise you, you're going to have an opportunity to I'm I'm giving me a minute, I promise you're going to have an opportunity to talk. Let me tell you, brother, don't get frustrated, don't get frustrated. Listen, I, I, all of that, all of that. let him talk, let him talk, bro. I don't want him to leave the panel. Let him talk, Yanger, because I don't want him to leave the panel. Please let him talk. Oh, I can't beat up on him a little bit? Okay. You can't beat up on me. I'm going to let him talk. You don't have nothing to beat up on I can snuff up. I'm going to tell you how I know that I'm getting under your skin because you're yelling, man. You're not even allowing me to ask to redress the, the shit that you said. Up. I can't even really dress what you said. I can't even you know, in the pocket. Hey, I'm going to leave this hey, kind of hey, black hey, Let him talk. Let them hey. do their thing. I'm not. I let this man talk. Hey, yeah. I let people talk. I sit back in the cut. You <laughs> cut me off because you're so in a, you're so in a hurry to, to try to make somebody wrong. I let you talk. I didn't say nothing. Then when I start talking, here you want to come. Now you talk. Man, get this nigga with some tissue. <laughs> Give him some tissue. Damn. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead and talk on. then, brother. I'm, I'm off the panel, Black Sound. Respect to y'all come here when I'm... I don't want to be on the panel with these these type of people. Hey, hey, Tommy, hey, Tommy, don't no, leave. No, 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 don't leave. Don't leave. Don't, don't leave. leave. Don't, don't, leave. Don't, leave. don't leave. Don't leave. Don't Tommy, leave. You go, brother. Don't go, brother. I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me say this, and I, I'll let you talk, A9. What I'm saying, the difference between your plan and... Let, let me just... 
Exactly. MD, you mind you mind if I just answer that question, MD? Because because I, I don't want it to go too far out of hand. I just want to answer that question for Yang about because the state will be in charge. So the state is in charge whether that felony you can hire that felony. So let, let's 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 do one thing straight. You know the federal government gives incentives for people that hire felons. So that, that's not that's number one. So the state would benefit. That's number one. Number two, whatever laws are in place. We, once you control that on what state, job, like son, on what, what job? job? Oh, construction. The state gives the state gives construction. incentives. Mm -hmm. Construction. That's what I'm talking about. What okay. about the blue collar jobs that advances you? What about the eighty hundred thousand dollar to three hundred thousand dollar year jobs, brother? I'm not talking oh, about like oh, like yeah, white collar. That's what I'm saying. White collar. Oh, white I'm not collar talking jobs. about just the, the 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 blue collar job. But I'll chill. I'm gonna allow snuff up. To talk, but what and, and son, I'm not gonna let you push that bullshit. You know the system is whack. You know what he was saying about us voting for a black leader. Where does that nobody answer my question? Who is white leader, who is Mexican leader? But everybody looks for black people to have a leader. And I and I'm done and I'm gonna be silent. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go on uh, mute. All right, uh hey now, what's going on, man? Yo, peace. I'm pulling up to this spot. Go ahead, bye, brother. I'm pulling up to the spot to pick up some food. I was trying to talk to y'all while I was on my way there. I didn't know it was going to turn into this. Um, to the brother, what's his name? Angels? No, no. I, I'm sorry. I'm not looking at the, um, I ain't looking at the joints. Uh, if, I, if I mess with somebody's name. I would say peace to you first, brother. Just relax. Um, I don't think the brother Yanga was trying to disrespect you. I mean, I've been here and answer questions for about two and a half hours straight. So. I think you can sit here and relax and answer some questions about what you're saying to our people. Uh, I get it if you don't want them to cut them off, but just just relax a little bit. That would be my first suggestion. Hopefully, we can have a fruitful dialogue. Uh, second off, I just want to clarify a couple of things about my thought process and my quote-unquote plan that I keep hearing propagated. Hold on, man. Let me back up in here real quick. Um, and I'm going to ask you for this. I'm going to ask you. Hold on real quick, Black. So I'm going to ask you this, too. Okay, okay. Like, bro, please stop miscategorizing me. I know, like, you got the tendency to try to be, you know, that's just your personality. Like you said earlier, oh, I'm going to say these things even though I don't really meet them. I'm trying to explain to you when it comes to dealing with me, especially when we start moving in the future, that's the quickest way to not have a dialogue with me, right? If you're going to talk about what I'm saying, then, then properly categorize it or don't talk about it, right? So first off, I don't just have a let's go to Africa plan. The plan that I put together is called Project Eden. It also includes Operation Goshen, which is to create cities of refuge here in the United States as well. OK, so it's not just, oh, let's everybody go to Africa. That's not what this is at all. All right. Second off, um, the conversation about electing a black leader or whatever, the community has to be galvanized first before we have any type of conversation about that. We need to be galvanized in thought. We need to be galvanized in, in, in need. And I do agree, like he's saying, okay, well, why why do we just get things forced upon us? Or why aren't we being asked what we want? Because if we do it that way, everybody's going to, okay, you got to include this. You got to include that. And some of these things are not beneficial for our people, right? So this is why there's a need to have a structural, you know, internal governmental. And I'm using the air quote situation here because I know we are in someone else's country. So to say we have our own internal government. In that respect would be, you know, pie in the sky, but we can have a leadership structure that we will work to work with, especially when it comes to lobbyists and things in this things of that nature in this country. If you're talking about trying to fight politically in this country, then you got to get involved in the social, economic and political aspect. So then that that goal would be to go get you some lobbyists. Right. This is why Claude Anderson talks about empowernomics. Uh, one of the biggest things that we need to do is get the bucks up so then we can, quote unquote, go buy a politician. Right. So. Um, the, the conversation about a black leader, I think, becomes a hasty generalization, and, and, and we kind of need to stay away from that. The final thing I want to talk about is the quote-unquote messianic thought. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a European concept that's been forced on us. The Bible doesn't talk about, oh, this person cracking the sky, right? This is actually one of the things that I, I vehemently go against when it comes to interpretation of the Bible. Right. The only thing, only reason you need a quote unquote messianic figure was to bring knowledge to the people. So if you want to talk about the Bible, I'll bring it out for you. Isaiah 53 says by his knowledge, he will justify people. 
So what we're looking for is people who have taken the time to get their knowledge up that can then educate our people and get us into the right space and get us into the right situation that we need to be. I'll go ahead and land right there because I don't want to be long with it. But I'll be here and ready to get it in. And scheme. I'm back home now. I got that work for you. I want my hundred dollars. Shout out to Scheme. I, um, I forgot about that shit. Yeah. Um. Y'all don't forget none of that. Stop saying my name. I'm finna embarrass old boy. Isaiah Finkelstein made it clear in his book David and Solomon that they would have ruled in the 10th century. Like I said, though, he disagrees with the size and scope of the kingdom. Who wants this smoke? Okay, so who wants to who wants the next up? Angel, Angel, which which um I believe it was on Brother Angel. I didn't want him to feel like I was dis, you know disrespect. I just had some questions. I think here's the whole thing about the arena, man. You have to look up here, and it is never intentionally with me anyway. And I would dare say generally the attitude and energy of the arena, it's never really to in disrespect in, in anyone intentionally. It does get intense. We are passionate and people are going to question ideologies, philosophies, theories. And that's what this shit is about. So, Angel Snubbin up. It was never my intentions to disrespect you as a person bringing what you feel is a real solution to our people. You know, but as you feel like you're a champion of the people, I feel like that. I think everyone on this panel to a degree feel like that they're their brother's keeper and they're trying to offer a solution. Uh, to the problem that millions of black people face here in America. I think that that's only right. And this is what this arena on Sensit is for that, you know, we say, hey, this is what we're, we're presenting as a solution. And it's open to the scrutinies, criticisms, questions. You know, we hope to do it respectfully. We're not trying to sit up on your toes personally, but it's going to, you know, have those questions. And that was just my question, because I I actually agree with what you're saying. Maz, I believe uh, I do too. Se I'm a separatist. I believe separation has to be had here in America, you know, but however I attach to that, I'm a revolutionary, you know, so therefore I believe that the current system we're under now is not, was not created for equality and justice for all human beings. And I don't think that you can take a corrupt, wicked system and all, you know, sprinkle sugar on. It's like sprinkling sugar on doo-doo. It's still shit. You know, it may taste sweet the first bite out of first lick, but the core of it is doo-doo. And so until we begin, however that looks, you know, this is the thing that as a revolutionary, I'm not a romantist. I'm not talking about, you know, a revolutionary is a revolution is not a two hour shootout in the middle of the street with Negroes with bandoliers on their uh, uh, chest, you know, the shotgun shells on their chest out there like Pancho Villa. You know, but it is a real process. So however that has to be had, what I'm saying is this, this, as the system currently stands, it is corrupt. And even if we remove ourselves from our white counterparts, if we still practice the same social, economic, political way of life, it still will net the same results. Oppression, tyranny, and suppression. Were Quick question. Who, who said, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I got my, I got my hands yes, Okay, okay, MD. Uh, all right, quick question. Who said we were going to remove ourselves from white people? I don't think the Mississippi plan said that. Oh, okay. I, that's why I say I may misunderstand it. Let me sit back and see what the, I thought it was a black nationalist plan. But let's see what you what it was it um, talk. And when I say remove myself from white people, I don't realistically think in America that you're not going to be in any proximity with white people. But um, I think when you're talking about the Mississippi plan, what I understood and what I know I talk about with separation is control of the of the government, of the political, social, economic features of the place that we're at. And that's that's what I'm asking. Will control of the social, economic, and political features of Mississippi resemble everywhere else in America, or is it just a collective of where Black people have went to move to Mississippi to do what America does amongst Black people? I think that's what I'm asking. Is it the same exact, you know, thing just in Mississippi? Okay. Okay. So what? So what I think should be done? I think Brother Talib should come on here and go point by point exactly what the Mississippi campaign is. If he doesn't want to do that, I mean, he can, I, I'm assuming that he'll like maybe direct you 
to where the, the plan is. But, like, he can speak for himself. It, it, if he can elaborate or if he can clarify, that'll be fine. But at no point in time did, did the plan ever say that we were going to separate ourselves from white people or uh, uh, disaggregate or, or um, alleviate any of the system. Why, as far as like, we were participating, that's not the point. The point is the political power doesn't have to come just with all Hey, is it me or is he coming in and out? Clarify yeah, what you right. mean by uh, okay. All right, I'll oh. I, I let, I let Talik talk because I, I might be in a bad area. Okay, dear brother, go ahead. Snap, no, come on and talk to us, man. Angel, come on and 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 because I want to I want to just say what I like from Mississippi campaign, but I want you to jump in so I don't misquote anything that you're saying. When Angel was talking about Mississippi campaign, him and MB, uh, they were talking about how you know getting people in place of the local government, your local, you know, you know, Yinga, you and I always talk about your local politics first. You know what I'm saying? Um, Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and, and dealing with, uh, dealing with, um, I guess, policies and procedures that would affect the immediate, um, with the community. So when, he was presenting that I was thinking about the first thing, like, uh, you know, I talked uh, with um, organ or organizations and their plans, you know, uh, a concern, a real concern is like I said, running water, electricity, you know, and, and angel said, and please correct me if I'm wrong, angel, angel said it's training wheels and everybody, he said it, the Mississippi campaign is not for everybody. So, um, I remember mm. saying that. Okay, we got well, Aina. I don't what's understand what's it for, though. What's 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 it? Okay, so somebody explain to me what's it for. If there isn't, I mean, if we're just gonna and son, you my guy, but you know mm. you a constitutionalist like a motherfucker. So I'm gonna that's keep right. it real. So that sh any shit that that's gonna sound good to you, you know. However, I'm trying to figure out what's the point of it. Like I like the idea, but if we're just going to emulate the same horrors that we live in right now what would be the point why would i go somewhere I just to know. allow black black people to damn oppress me what would be the point of going to mississippi if i'm going to do the exact same mm. shit i'm doing in cleveland or i'm doing in atlanta or anywhere else in the world why would i go there just to do it with a bunch of negroes and 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 we're emulate so i need to hear the look at the very least, and you know, I don't advocate no theocracy, but damn, at least at the very least, there's something different. You know, they're <laughs> they're presenting something different. I mean, I'm not with theocracies, and I'm not with neocolonialism. I'm not with blackface and white place. You, you know, I'm not with us emulating. Uh, homo I'm not with assimilation, homogenization, none of that shit. I'm not with us emulating the same exact horrors that we're living under. So someone I would like some, like in the Republic of New Africa, okay, we know they want South, we know the, the six states that they want, they have a constitution called the Code of Umoja, shit is broke up into districts, they have the Revolutionary uh, uh, Council that acts as their uh, Senate or would be the equivalent of something like that, their Senate or um, um, something to this effect. So there's real like tangible things that they at least at the very least have in writing that they are saying here's the counter to the current system we live under i would like to know the counter more than just me physically getting up to move at the risk of sounding redundant you kind of guys you kind of guys get i mean you guys kind of get the question i'm trying to ask i mean not really because you keep saying this term system but yet you realize that the system is being manipulated by said group of people so I, I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to get clarification is it the system 
or is it how it's played? It, yes. It's it's, it's, the how, it's how it's played. It's the it's you the can system. put No, it's no, it's the system itself. You can get black people and put them in the system. If the system doesn't change, it's still the same system. It's still a system of oppression and a system of tyranny. Like, are we changing? What does the welfare system look like? What is, you know, in this play? I mean, are we changing some things when we go there? And I don't expect anything to change overnight. But right. is it the same shit we face everywhere else? I mean, what would, what's the point of moving there other than black people being involved in politics if we're not even going to change the politics? You so, know what I'm saying? So, like we talked about. No, I'm saying, so if the system can be mm. melded and shaped and this, that, and that, uh, based on the ideals of a certain group, is it the system? Will it still be the system if it's melded and shaped? You tell me. Yeah, if it's the same, unless you change it. <laughs> so yeah, if I, it's still the system unless you completely change it. You know, you can put so, you can put you can put Pepsi in a Coca Cola bottle. It's still Pepsi. Well, it's still soda. But okay, so if I change it from said system, if I change it, what do, what does it become? If you change the system. If I change said system and make it something, quote unquote, different, what is it? I don't, you would have to tell me, what is it? It's a new system. It isn't, that's it. We know the system we're fighting. I think so that's the system the is, is the for. one that's the problem. Not just the, the system the, in general, it's the system. No, I believe in, I believe in a system. I believe we but should it, have a system, but it's the system that we live under currently. The way that it is enacted, the way that it's enforced. The way it's imposed on the masses of people, it is the system currently. I do believe okay. in a system. I think that's what the fight for Black America is: finding so a you, system that works for us collectively. So, do you believe in capitalism in general? No, I personally don't. Okay, so if you change said system and make it something different, what would it be? Just, just, just me if being curious. I, if I change the system, if I think if I change the system, I'm I'm an incrumist. You know what I'm saying? Right now, where I'm currently at politically, it probably would be more African socialist centered. It probably would be more socialist, but not Eurocentric, not Marxist Leninist, but more Nkruma, you know, because I'm an incrumist. Uh so right now, if I had to have a system, that would be what I lean to. But even with that. I think that it has to be tweaked. I think that it has to be uh, worked in such a way that is effective for us. This is one of the reasons I love Malcolm and I love Dr. Huey P. Newton and I love Matula Shakur. I love black American revolutionaries because not only did they take the understanding of a revolutionary from an international uh, understanding, but they added us in it specifically. They didn't try to make us black Bolsheviks. They didn't try to make us black Cubans or black Chinese revolutionaries. They understood that we were black men and women over here uh, with a unique situation, with unique problems, and that our revolution would be a unique uh, revolution catered specifically to black people here. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely think that we would have, a, have to have a system that addresses us. We can't just emulate everybody else. Our system would have to address us. Like China's system addresses China. China is flirting with capitalism. You know what I'm saying? They realize that staunch ass communist shit wasn't gonna fly. You know, that's just more imitation of the European. So um yeah, I think we would have to have a system that is unique to us and and not I in, in, in concluding, I think black people what we do a lot of times, we try to force our real life situation into these books we read, whether it be the Quran, the Bible, whether it be motherfucking Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. We try, we take our real life situations and begin to say, yeah, because that's something like what we're going through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, we black Bolsheviks. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, but Yanga, I, 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 I yeah. got a question. I got a question. Talk to me. So you say, um, this thing about capitalism. Now we can point to history where black people have mastered capitalism and where well, black people don't have a problem with capitalism and ca black people have and, prospered off of capitalism. 
we can point the, that throughout history. So point, who, point it out, point it out, say, point it out through history. I hear what you're saying. So, so point it out through on. history where the masses of black people have the masses, not a few, bourgeoisie elite that have had okay, their but, revolution and their movement that that capitalized on the backs of black people, mainly, uh, and I don't want to say illiterate, but not as well read. They came down and pimped the shit out of black people in the South. Got us voting, got us doing all that shit for upward mobility for a few bourgeoisie motherfuckers. And the masses of black people in the South did all of that and still did. It was still damn near 10 years before they saw anything enacted. Okay, so that's in, what so I'm I, talking I, I, about. I agree, so you I show agree me. With that's why, and this is why my theocratic. You show me. I agree with that. Huh? Well, let's hear I, Anon's. I, Anon, okay, well, can, can, let's hear Anon's plan because I know Anon, okay, you know. So, I, now, I so, now, so now let's start to talk about this. I actually okay. can show you a working model right now in Demona that, that's actually killing all of this conversation. And, I, and I'll give you a perfect example, right? So there's an actual video. They're doing an interview. The brother's walking through Demona. He walks into an ice cream shop. He walks up to the, to the beautiful sister. He says, Hey, sister, is this your shop? You know, can I come into your ice cream shop? She corrects him right on the spot and says, this is our ice cream shop. Meaning that shop wow. belongs to the community. And everything, every prosperous thing that comes from that shop then goes into the community. Right? And mm -hmm. this is just one small ice cream shop. Right? Okay. This is why I'm mm -hmm. telling you in, in the system that I'm talking about, it's not going to be, oh, Muslims come over here and this come there and there. Because I heard you say, oh, hey, now I want everybody to be friends with the Muslims. And it is like, once again, hyper, hyper, imposed, just going crazy off everything that I say. What I told you was, you're going to want to come into my system. I'm not going to force you to do anything. You're going to look at the rest of the systems and look at what we're building and what we're doing and say, that's how we should govern ourselves. That's what I'm telling you will happen. Right. Once we show you a model of how we can actually come together as groups, build businesses together that then we take said profits and use that to reimburse, restructure, and build up the actual community. So, for instance, what we're doing right now, because I did just come back from a part of Georgia where we now have the land that has a church on it, and we have more land that we're going to now put properties on there and then use those properties as transitional housing, then use the profit from said properties to continue to do it, right? Instead of everybody, instead of one or two people having a Mercedes and a huge house, and everybody can have a certain size house with a car, and now we can start to practice upper mobility in that perspective, right? What I'm telling you is, is your inability to really listen to what I'm telling you because you hate, oh, he's telling us we have to worship somebody, we have to worship something, it's going to cause you not to be able to see the system work, right? I'm waiting for someone to show me a system that has actually worked, right? I, I can actually show you these people leaving here going over to Africa, now participating in something where they've been there for 50 years, and they have now built something up that has now allowed me to actually be able to step into it and to implement it and to follow it to, to the T as a blueprint, right? Show me something else like that. I don't know the Mississippi plan, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not against it. Here's the funny part. I'm not against it. If you have a system that you think can work, I'm telling you to go work it. It's, it's when we... Try to please. Breaking up. It, A9, you're breaking up. Is so, that me? Because, yeah, like he was breaking up. Pretty no, bad. no, that's, that's A9. They say, that's A9. Each other's he, system that's, against that's each other is what causes the problem. I don't need you to. Yeah, that's him. Tell me when, I, tell me when I'm clear okay. again. I'm back here on this back road. I'm going to be home. I'll. We'll, we'll hold it down, okay. man. Why, yeah, why, we'll why, down, why man. he waiting to get to the house? Yeah, why he waiting to get, get to the house? I'll say this. I like for for as long as I can remember, people have come taking up land, building it up, and and circulating the wealth through the community. That's cool. I don't, I don't initially have a problem with that. I think that's what we all should be doing. My issue is, what are you gonna do when? The county commissioner or, or or the zoning department come through and want to put a top golf on your lane. Right. You know what I mean? I think like Claude Anderson, Powernomics, great book, right? But I think Claude Anderson had it backwards. I think political amnesty has to be 
I personally, I follow Dr. Sandy, uh, Sandy there. He's leading the communists in, in this reparations movement, right? I love Even I he love said. Darity. I love William Darity, by the way. And I love his partner, Derek right. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. are you, but are you prepared to really talk about what Darity says? Because one of the things that Darity talks about is the need for political representation. But even before that, what you need to do is go ahead and, and force these people to start to pay reparations. Why? Right. Because then that money... It can then, because then that money, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I, I'm just trying to jump nah, in right there. You, hey, you in my lane, bro. You in my lane. You in my lane. Now you, 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 yeah, you just dropped in his lane. Yep. Yep. Bet. Okay. So now when we talk about what Darity talks about, another thing that he's proposing are the baby bonds, right? And I, if you keep up with his work, right? All of right. these things we need political leverage to do. So while I hear what you're saying about Dr. Claude Anderson, the reason that it worked is because he actually utilized it in his, in the political office that he was in, and he was actually begging us to come into it. I get what you're saying, but we have to have a political representation, and in this country, because they're so greedy, the only way we can do that is to have the money to do it. So if you're uh, going to play the political, social, economic game in this particular country, we got to have the bucks to play. That's just a, that's just a clear-cut, plain, simple, no-cut dope of the information. I, I mean, I, I, I kind of agree. I don't believe like I don't believe the economics comes first in any situation in regards to reparations. I do believe that we can have political representation. We just may have to take the back door to get in. There. I don't I'm not know. I don't know if you're aware of NAASD out there in California, what they're doing right now. It's ways to not get it done. But hold on. But, but also that's because they got them staunch black women as they representatives working backdoor deals, brother. I love it. Well, I'm from Cal I'm from California. So this is how I know. They got yeah, them I staunch they got them staunch hardcore black women and that Mexican woman, Ms. Cortez, up there going to work doing backdoor deals to make these things happen. We gotta we gotta understand what like so I, I don't know if everybody really keeps up with it, right? But there are several conversations that happen behind the scenes that are getting things done so people can keep their hands clear in their political theater. These things never happen just by saying, oh, we woke up today and it happened. So, for instance, in the area where I'm, I'm about to go and set these things up, right, one of the main things that we're doing is working on getting a representative in City Hall, in this small town. So that way, when we do start to build this up, they're not building a top golf. They're not going to come and overrun us. And if they do, the rest of the town is going to revolt because they made promises that they would allow these people to have this land and use it in the way that we're talking about using it, right? Hey, are you talking about Goshen, bro? No, I'm building something no. else. Oh, okay. I know what you're all talking right, about, right. though. But I, nah, I'm building all something all else. All right, all right, all right. Shout out to them right. brothers, though. Shout, shout out to the brothers and sisters up in Sparta. You know what I'm saying? They getting, they, they getting it in. They had a couple Cause I, of cause problems. Because I, cause I, cause I know they had a dude that yeah, they were trying to they get. Had, yeah, they had, yeah, they had a couple problems with him, though. So, it, you know, it, uh, yeah, I don't even want to go there. But, you know, but but I will say this. Our community dealt with him, and now he up out of here. So, um, so the only point only the point that I'm making is this. While I, while I, I hear you, and I want to just say, man, it shouldn't be about money. Unfortunately, in this particular system, if you're gonna fight in this system, you gotta have some type of economic base. And and I, I wish that there was something else. I haven't seen it be able to, to be done. This is why Clyde Anderson is talking about this quid pro quo, right? You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That that's how this system works. It it's just is what it is. So either we yeah. either we create a new system while simultaneously participating in this one to, to the point of we, we don't have a choice, right? I'm not a staunch capitalist. I just know what we have to do. I got to participate in this system if I want to build something else. I understand that, bro. Like I said, I, I'm 100% I'm with you on that. The difference between me and you is I don't believe that we have to have the funds in order to participate politically. In fact, I would even go far as to say if we all came together right now with, on one accord on a political platform, we still wouldn't have the money because we don't have the wealth built up. You but can't we would have a like, barter. We, but we would have a barter, right? So watch this. It, 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 barter, your, your, barter your money is not long economic. enough, bro. I don't care how many people on, you put on, together. On, it's not long now, enough. Now, now, now we're now we moving beyond. Okay, so I hear you. So let's move beyond actual dollars, though, right? 
now we have a barter system. And what I mean by that is now we have a group of people. Let's say, for instance, all black people then start to partner with a lot of the Mexicans, right? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just using a hypothetical. Please don't take this and say, hey, nonsense, we need to work with Mexicans. Whatever y'all want to do, right? <laughs> I'm just I'm throwing out a hypothetical because y'all are very hyperbolic around here when it comes to everything I say. I get it, but let's, let's all right, I'm just throwing out a hypothetical, right? Now, we can attach some of our wants with some of their wants. This is this is the this is the this is the the i the ideal of a political bartering system, right? So if Mexicans have a bill on on the table that hey now you're breaking up again, brother. Yeah, you're breaking up. Hey, yeah, I, breaking I don't up. believe that. You know, would agree with that. This is running, right? Now we can go to uh, what's her name? I'm break. Let me give me a second. I'll be back to the crib. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. I, I I mean, didn't Yanga just say, like, like who was the leader of who, and, and and you know, trying to do things on our own, and like I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Hey, look, I'll say this: we have the numbers to move politically. We have them. This, at the same time, with them, with those numbers, everybody's money ain't long enough to move politically. You know what I'm saying? We have to yeah. understand political literacy and what's what on the books. Like, <laughs> Daniel talks about the system, bro. It's mm -hmm. this system can be mailed. It can be shaped. Trust me. Yeah. So when we talk about funds, yeah. like I said again. Anon just said you got to have the money to move politically. I don't believe that. I, I I mean I just don't. We don't have the money collectively to move anything. I don't care how how much of I think we do. Me now? We yeah, yeah, go ahead. We we spend a trillion dollars a year. Trillion. Yeah. We have the money. We're not organized say though. Trillion dollars a year. Trillion dollars a year says it. Inyame, you can jump in any time, brother, because I know you've been quiet sitting there. Ain't, um, Inyame, you know this is your home, brother. So, yeah. All right. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you now. I'm so sorry, man. Still breaking up. I'm back. I'm back to the crib now. My fault, brothers. All right, keep going. I didn't want to cut y'all. I just wanted to make sure y'all could hear Three seconds. Pull up in this driveway. I should be better now. Am I clear now? No, nah, no. Nah, yeah, so... Yes, no. Yeah, you sound a little bit better now. Well, so I say this to Yeager. Yeah, like, yeah, we in MD, you break it up now. Y'all, you break it up now. Yeah, damn. All right, I'm back. Damn, that might breaking up yeah yeah now yours is breaking up mb oh all right well i well i i'll, I'll give the flow go ahead can i tap back in real quick because I, I wanted to clear something up um just with the economic conversation hold on baby hold on daddy on the joint give me give me one second let me finish this then i'll talk about the game okay yeah hold on i'm almost finished um sorry fellas um the only thing i'm saying is this okay if you say we don't have the actual uh, liquid capital to make it happen. We still have the political. You breaking up a nine? Oh uh, shit! Some causes that our Mexican counterparts would have, or whatever the situation may be. If you're gonna play the game, right? I'm just saying, if you're trying to get involved with this system, we have to have some form of economy or economic. Ability to fight and, and and get busy in the system, even if it's just being able to pay for and build up and train up lobbyists and politicians. Whatever it is, though, we have to be able to utilize it and go get it. That's what I'm saying. And and you're not gonna get there by just saying we're 40 million strong. Let's do it, right? It, it doesn't work that way. So so it's, so it ain't possible to build and train up people in our own community to go run for these offices. We got it. We don't have no I choice. Said that. I, I literally just said that. Okay. So I, nah, I, I heard you say we got to have the capital 
to build and train up to, to I mean, okay. lobby in, in lobbyist form. Like we don't, let, we let don't me, have to let, lobby for let, that. Let me say that, it again. That's, that's let political let, literacy. Let, let, let me say it again. I, I don't because I know I just said it. Maybe y'all didn't hear it or I don't know, but I said we could actually get the funds and raise up and train up our own lobbyists and politicians. But either way it goes, we have to have a, a way of funding that. Now, if that means that we put something on the ballot to where they give us in form of reparation, you know, some type of education as well, which I think is happening is probably going to be part of the reparation packet that we see happening in California, right? It's going to, they might end up including something like, you know, uh, some type of education stipend. I don't know. I, you know, I'm trying. I'm still getting into the, the fine print of everything and what it seems to be being proposed. So, yeah, they, what I'm saying. Okay. He break up again. He breaking up. But I heard. I understood yeah. the gist of it. So, but what I'm saying is that's still a form of, and, and believe it or not, that's still a form of money, right? That's still a form of of economic equity, because that's really what we're fighting for, right? And, and I hear Domo talk about this a lot. This is why I be trying to let him get it in in this respect, because I've always felt this way. This equity that we're trying to chase after, there's different ways to have it. There's different avenues of approach. That's why I say we need to understand all 10 areas of people activity and then learn how to attack it. Right. How I would attack the religious sector looks completely different from how I would attack the political sector than how I would attack the education sector than how I would attack so on and so forth, right? Because I'm not going to bore y'all with all 10 areas. But uh, I understand, like, I, I think we get, we hear the word money and then we run because all we know is liquid dollars and cents. We don't understand uh, economic equity. I'll uh, yield right there. All right, I, I, I'll say this in, in, in response to that, then I'll let somebody else go. The information that's out now and like the brother said, you know, shots out to NAASD and Sister Camilla and all that they're doing out there in California. The information is out for us to become politically literate as to what it means for us to be freedmen, right? When you look at us like building lobby forms and and like I said, I want to say this. I don't know if the brother knows. Like I, I was a strong opponent for the brother Marcel out there in South Carolina. That brother ran six months prior on the campaign before the actual election. He only raised, I want to say it was a little over $100,000. The brother got only 3% of the vote out there in South Carolina. I think uh, the district was District 6. He was running up against uh, Jane Clyburn. But what the brother did on a national level, not just in South Carolina, what the brother did on a national level to create political literacy as what it means for us to be freedmen captivated every black American that listened to him in the nation. So what is so what has become now, everybody's talking about political literacy. Political literacy to me is the equity because we don't even got that right now to tell you the truth. And what I mean by political literacy, I'm talking about the statutes. I'm talking about the laws that were put in place that were mishandled, misappropriated. We have to learn to disaggregate from everything that the, the term freedmen and what it basically means. We, we have to understand what we are as a protected class. That's the goal to me. Reparations, yes, that's what we want. But I don't think that's the goal. Protect protection in the in, in the citizenship of America is, is the ultimate goal to me. So I want us to understand that political literacy has to be the focal point right now. And at the end of the day, once we have that, if you want to go uh, 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 funds based, that's cool. I I don't got no problem with that. But we have to understand what we are in this nation, and we can't shy away from the system in this nation, in my opinion, because we're a part of. It. We just have to understand where our place is in it after emancipation. And that's and that's what I say now. I listen to what y'all got said and I respond. I want to hear what Yanga got to say to me. Because I believe in the system. Uh, right now, just listening to you guys. You know, and actually, like I said, I you know, 
listening to you guys. I don't have a problem with because I know it's a process. I don't believe in the system, but I know it's a process. And I don't hear anything uh, so far that I disagree with. I, I Like I said, I believe I know it's economic and political power <clears throat> at a certain part, uh, you know, for a revolution to really take process. So I don't disagree what I'm hearing. What I'm hoping, though, is the end game is revolution. Like, you know, if, if for people who participate in the system, I hope it's radical reform. Right. I hope it's radical reform. I hope it's to push the contradictions of the system to constantly expose the hypocrisy in the system to uh, be able to show how the system is being used to keep us down, even when alleged laws should be for us, like these civil rights laws that were specifically supposed to be given to uh, create some type of equity or to end some of the disparity between black America and white America. And they turn around and let women use it and foreign women use it and all kind of it. So we even get we even get fucked um, within the very laws that we try to have enacted within the system. So we know that the system I'm saying that racism is so ingrained and embedded in the system that it is a part of the system that under this current system, the way that America practices capitalism under the current system, there is never going to be upward mobility advancement or liberation for black, black Americans here. I just, I don't see it under the current system. I see upward mobility for a few, you know, but the system has always been designed to do that, you know, and we we're people that don't move collectively. When you look at our brown brothers that come over here, they move collectively. When you look at for like I'm up in Cleveland now with a lot of ethnic enclaves, you know, the Germans move collectively up here. The Dutch move collectively up here. So we don't move collectively. We've still bought into the American dream. And we don't believe that the American dream is 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 divided along lines. So even when we move politically in the system, we're so divided because we don't believe in ourselves as a collective that we're Democrat, we're Republican blindly. We don't even say, OK, <laughs> is my allegiance to this party even beneficial for me and my people collectively? You see what I'm saying? Until we start getting thinking along those levels, we have really bitten into the American dream of individualism and individual upward mobility and not collectively. And that's my whole thing as a black nationalist. What is the best system um, for us all to participate in? You know, I think that that's the challenge for me. And Yami. Peace, peace, Paul, everybody. Peace to you, brother. Yeah, it's about I think that it's just what, what is your end game? If if your end game is we're we just should be a a, a protected class, then I, I will support you if, if that's how you feel. But I, I think the ultimate goal is power. The ultimate goal is black people controlling their own resources, mm -hmm. controlling their own government. Um, mm -hmm. controlling our own economics. I think that's, for me, that's the ultimate goal. Um, to, to say that we're a protected class, and you look over the history, you don't, you don't see much protection. Our only mm -hmm. uh, recourse within the system is that we're part of the, the minority, and the minority is protected. So you got to include everybody that that's under that umbrella of minority, the the whites, the gays, foreign people. That's that's how women. we do yeah. women. Yeah, right. So everybody is all included in that. So it becomes then it becomes a competition. Okay, you have all these opportunities. Who's best suited to be a part of the the upper echelons of America? And if you make it, and if you make it, if you make it, you make it, and if you don't. Then hey, that's that's just too bad. That's how the system goes. And so we're seeing too many black people at the bottom of that that ideology in American society. Because it's only going to be a few that's going to be able to make it up that ladder. Because the, the 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 higher you go, the more narrow the ladder gets. So you got to kick some people down. You got to kick some people off to 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 climb up to the top. And so what is a system 
design that's going to benefit the majority of black people. If you feel like this is the system for it, then I support you. I think ultimately, just like Brother Malcolm and, and all the, the leaders say, we have to have control of our own environment. From the, from the point of the land, to the growing of the food, to the water, to the to the taking resources, process the resources. Education. Entirely. Yeah, the, the whole thing. And mm -hmm. so- Self-determination. Yeah, that's the that's the ultimate goal. And what is the best route to that goal? That's for me. If if, if I'm clear with what I'm saying. No, I mean I, I agree with that in Yummy. I think yeah. I, I well I would say I think the system that I'm talking about, in my personal opinion, would be, and I keep hearing a lot of people say I agree with what you're saying, right? Um you know. My concern would be now, show me what else we have that's codified that we can look at and start to, you know, emulate that. That's what I'm starting to ask people. Because all of the Bible hate and all of the Bible thumpers and the this and that, right, that falls on deaf ears once people start showing you a different system. And we have a different system on whack, on record. And then Yame knows about that. Or, or I'm sorry. Um, I think yeah, Yame know about Demona, but Yanga knows about Demona as well, right? The the yeah. And yeah. I'm not and I'm not saying oh it's massive and they just create millions of dollars and I'm telling you it's a blueprint, right? That's all I'm telling you. There's a blueprint there that we can take and follow, and actually build and work on, right? Um, the difference I, the oh, difference I, I hear. Well, well, I was, I was gonna, I was trying to yield to anybody. Yeah, okay, got quiet. Glad you said it. No, no, no. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay, a nine. The difference I, I'll between. Be, I, I'll be happy okay. to say something, brother Black song. Okay, thank you, thank you, Angel. I want to say this. I'm very happy. I'm very proud that I have been in this struggle since I was a child. I learned of this, this pain and this suffering, this injustice that has happened to my people. And as scary as I was, I still stood up and wanted to fight so we can be better. I come from the same place that many of you come from, especially when it comes to the pro-black mindset. I come from the same place. Matter of fact, I might even be worse because I had to hold myself back a lot. I'm saying this because when I was a young man, I was very violent. If Louis Farrakhan had gave me the order to assassinate Reagan, it would have been good as done. I ain't, I'm not here to play games with you. That's how serious I am. Nobody saw me as something to play with in the community. I don't play. I don't play games. As scary as I was. I was a, a scary person. But see, when it's time for something to get done, I got to do it. I might be scared to shoot a gun. Close my eyes, pow, pow, pow. Nothing to play with. So I've heard this stuff for over 40 years. I've heard all this. Nobody telling me nothing new. I've heard it. I was in the nation of Islam, but I've heard it all. I sat in the crazy house for 10 years. Where was all this? while I was locked up for 10 years. What was you doing? All this wisdom. Between 19, between 1997 and 2007, you was free. Man, y'all was free, right? You weren't locked up. So while I'm locked up and you got all this wisdom and we know all this stuff, what was they doing? I went in one way. 
came out, it was still exists, the same stuff. Ain't nobody moved, ain't nobody progressed or did a damn thing. The wonderful thing about that incarceration, it gave me an opportunity to erase all those things out of my mind. Because if I continue to have the mind that I had, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Probably be dead, jump the fence, run, mess around and got shot. So I understand something different has got to change because I am here because clearly something about those things don't work. If it worked, I helped you. I give you a thousand percent. I come out the crazy house and you're doing nothing. They've been making mockery of the Mississippi campaign since 2018 when we first brought it. From 2018 to 2022, what have they accomplished? What they have they done? I only have 10 subscribers. There's thousands of these people with these ideas and think this way. What have you accomplished? You ain't accomplished no more than I have. And I only have 10 subscribers. I have a problem. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. If you got it going on so much like that, between 2018 and you were established. Mississippi campaign just came on, on board 2018, February. You've been on board and got this mindset and thousands of people. They just had some kind of, I believe, I don't know if you know about it. They just had some kind of pro-black convention down in Atlanta last month or something like that. What did they do? They have another one on the 22nd. Sister Tad, you, Sister Tad, you said, they selling shea butter and sea moss. That's what they do. This is what this big convention is. They selling shea butter and, and incense. And they was doing that in the 80s. So here you are. Here we are. A new mindset. A new strategy. And the first thing we want to do is try to find the fault. What about your damn fault? Where's your, you've been doing this for what, since 1977, since 1930? Won't you question that bullshit? Won't you question that? Why is it not working? And mind you, I helped those things. I helped the nation of Islam. I gave to the Hebrew Israelites. I helped all the black power folks. Nobody helped Angel Snuffin up seven. As soon as Angel Snub Nub 7 puts something out, they want, I get attacked. But what have you done? What have you accomplished? The Mississippi yeah, campaign ahead. cannot operate. It cannot function. It will not be successful with people having a Negro attitude. That's part of the Mississippi campaign is to ask, ask the people, we've got to have a different mindset a different way of looking at life, a whole brand new lifestyle. You've got to look at things differently. Number one, Brother Black Son, the people might not even want it. They might like like things right. just the way they are. And if people like the, 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 the things the way they are, so be it. That's why I ask you, what do you want? Because I'm not going to, I'm not a savior. I'm not a messiah. So I'm going to ask you what you want. What do you expect? Well, they might, quick, like, just the, they oh, might oh. like things just the way they are. So I'm not going to waste my time, spend my money, trying to run around here and say some ungrateful ass Negroes like they make fun of Dr. King, they make fun of Malcolm and all our freedom fighters. They find something wrong. What the hell? And what, do you, what have you produced? We have not produced nothing since the civil rights era. Absolutely nothing. You have nothing to add to what Dr. King did to what Malcolm or whoever did, the Black Panther Party, ain't added nothing. I'm, me personally, I'm ashamed. Only thing we can do is come together and run your mouth on a damn YouTube video, Facebook. That's the best we can do. And go on Facebook and put up some memes. That's the best thing that you can accomplish because you're arrogant. You don't even know how to go on the street and talk to somebody. The way some of y'all talk on social media, see, I was boots on the ground. I talked to people in their face. You, the way some of you talk to people 
Boots on the ground, they'll slap you in your face. Don't blow your brains out. I know how to talk to people. I was out there with the gang members one, two o'clock in the morning in the Cabrini Green Chicago Housing Projects. I'm out in Harlem one, two, three in the morning talk to the brothers and sisters. Ain't nobody never even tried to hurt me, had much respect. And I got on that case about a lot of stuff. I took, look, I'm so bold, I took liquor out of people's hands. Negro, please, what do you think you're doing? That's how bold I was. Brother, you don't need that. This wartime. Why don't we study and give something a chance before we before we condemn it? Study it because the Mississippi campaign, I got many videos, I got a lot of things out there. Why don't we learn about things first before we try to condemn? I'm not gonna con condemn, I'm not gonna condemn Anon because I really don't know what his plan, I don't know what he's doing. So what do it look like for me? Well, brother, blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna do that. I got to see what are you doing. Then I ask you civilly about this and that and that. Matter of fact, the Mississippi campaign is designed so Anon could actually be part of the Mississippi campaign. So nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. And the people aren't ready. Just like Brother Blackstone reminded, this is the Mississippi campaign is like training wheels. And we have to do things little by little by little because they ain't ready again maybe you and your little organization maybe y'all ready well go for it but the people this 40 45 they ain't interested jay-z ain't interested in what you're talking about these videos should be getting millions of hits but they don't because the people are not interested go to your family reunion how many of your people in your family reunion talking about this type of subject that we talk? They ain't interested. Give me something to drink. Give me something to smoke. Damn, that girl got a fat booty. That's where their head is at. What's coming on TV? Did you miss the, the last episode of uh, Raising Cane on uh, uh, Netflix or whatever? Or That's, on what power. Right. Right. <laughs> That's where their mind is at. Ain't nobody thinking about ain't nobody thinking about us like that. And we're too stupid to unite and get together. Those of us who do have some kind of awakening in the mind, we're too stupid and selfish to get together and say, okay, how can we work this out? I understand what you don't like. I know, we are all there and understand what you don't, but what do you like? What can, what can we build on that all of us can agree and we build on that and raise up? And most of all, do you have an understanding or are you prejudiced against somebody simply because they are different than you are? I'm not talking because I hate the nation of Islam. I'm not talking because I hate the Hebrew Israelites or dislike so-and-so. That's not where I'm coming from. I'm saying that those things either Either you find something new or you're going to have to revise how you think it because those things aren't working like they should. They're not moving us forward. You're still stuck like you're in the 1930s. You're still stuck like this in the 1960s. This is 2022. Sim similar circumstances, but the people are different. So you got to work with what the people work with. If you're working with alcoholics, you have to understand they are alcoholics, bro. They have a they got a problem. And I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna turn this over. I was in the crazy house for 10 years. They laughed at me because I told them I'm going to unite us and we're gonna change stuff here. Oh, they laughed. <laughs> now these are these are crazy people, insane. Most of them out of their minds, digging in their butt and throwing feces on the wall. That's who I was living with y'all for 10 years. But guess what? I was kind to them and I took my time and I was nice to them. And a lot of them I did not like, but they, they gonna serve a purpose. See, that's another thing. You don't have to like people. So I talked to them and got them together got them to understand 
we are all the same here. We're going to make a change. And so one day, the enemy came. Y'all ready to go back to the plantation? Y'all ready to go to these classes? They said, no, we ain't going nowhere. What you going to do to us? We already locked up. And they stood fast. And they let me be their mouthpiece. I will speak for us. We're not doing nothing. Oh, that was a messed up day. They was like, what the hell? That was a messed up day. Because they told me I couldn't get insane people to, together. And I did. Now, if I can get in, so-called insane people together so we can make a change where we was locked up, why is it so hard? Why I can't communicate with the so-called sane? Or are you really the insane? Because a lot of us are insane. We just haven't been diagnosed. You got to be insane. Real quick. Look, you got to be insane when you know without unity, you can't get nothing done. But you continue to do, do the beautiful things that you do, and you're still in here living in living in your fantasy world that's what that's that's the you live in your fantasy world this 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 wakanda matter of fact y'all black panther 2 is coming out i know some of you got your tickets already because that feeds your that feeds your fantasy that this all black beautiful world nothing is perfect because even if you did what you did there's going to be problems because everybody different some people like apple some people don't there's always going to be problems. Ain't nobody, there's no utopia because everybody was born different, even in your family. Everybody is different. Until you learn how to respect difference and diversity, you ain't going to do no work. You are going to be, you're going to die in the same place where you are right now, I guarantee you. I'm passing the mic to our, our brother, Ana. I appreciate you, brother. And I want to start off first by saying I applaud you for all that you've overcome. Um, I think, you know, we've all been through a lot. And so to hear a lot of these stories of triumph, uh, you know, I think that they need to be heard. I think they need to be said. I also agree with you that we have a lot of issues in our community that, uh, if, if, if I'm being honest with you, uh, some of those things we're not going to be able to fix right now, right? Everybody mm -hmm. ain't going to go. We, we just put yeah. it like that. Everybody can't freedom ain't for everybody, right? Exactly. So, um, I'm a, I'm gonna gladly go check out uh, what you building and what you working on because the economic model that me and my brothers have built says that we can build and work with anybody economically, right? And I'll challenge any anybody any Hebrew Israelite that says differently. Um, I also would ask you to kind of study the new paradigm of a lot of new Israelites, right? Um, Divine Prospect and Kingdom Harbinger Ministries, um, an elder by the name of Judah up in, in Buffalo in the Knesset of Yeshua, right? I, you know, I have at least 10 groups that I know for a fact are on the same conversation that you have, right? Um, so, you know, I'll volunteer and say I'll work with you if, if it's a sustainable plan that we can put together and work with. You know, I'm all for uh, coming together and, and unifying our people, right? The only thing that I want to make clear is anything that me and my group does, we, you know, we're going we gonna to worship our God, right? That don't mean I'm coming to every meeting saying, oh, you got to praise your house, right? <laughs> ain't, 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 ain't none of that, right? But when we go home and our everyday walk and our everyday lifestyle, we're going to worship our deity. We're going to praise our deity in, in, in everything that we do. And in doing so, the goal is to show you that we can believe in our God and not go out here and attack and, and cause riots and, and destroy the world. We rather want to be the healing that the world needs. So you can say, oh, you're trying to sing Kumbaya. I would tell you to be careful because I'm also one of those people that believe in walking quietly and carrying a big ass stick. So just understand, like, this is not Kumbaya. This is we got to build an actual sustainable community. So sometimes, yeah, we got to chill out. But that also means that we have a protective force. It also means that we do everything to look after our brothers and sisters to make sure we don't have to raise our hand and ask to be a protected class. We just protect our class. And mm -hmm. so, so, and so immediately, right, when, this sounds powerful, but then there's the actual work of doing that, right? There's the actual work of what does that look like? 
right? Are you ready to go to the communities and talk to your brothers and sisters, which is what me and my brothers be doing in September, going to San Bernardino, where a little girl got shot, right? Out at a wake for somebody else that got shot, right? This is outrageous. And so yes. we'll be boots on the ground in that community. Not to say do what we say, but because I do talk to former gang leaders, former gang bangers, we can walk right to them and say, look, brother, I get it. Y'all got to go move your dope. You got to do the things you got to do. Can you help us carve out a space of safety? Can we make an agreement that we have a space of safety that gives our people a chance to grow since they can't leave this community? Help us at least give them a dome of safety. And then all those that want to participate in that, they can. All those that still want to continue the things you're doing, go out there. Right. And that's a fair request. And we've done it before. We've done it different times before I was even any type of black nationalistic ideology. Right. This was something we was able to do at different parts and different cities and things that I grew up, grew up, grew up in. So I hear you and I agree. And what I'm saying is what I'm saying is now it's to the point where the leaders got to lead. That don't mean lord over you. But that means I got to lead an example. I got to lead in my walk, my talk, my speech. And I'll say this before I get done. I heard what y'all were saying about um, you feel like sometimes I come across arrogant. So I'm going to do my best to not come across like that. But I will say this. Y'all got to be careful when you just sit back ridiculing a person all day long for months on end. Now I'm going to give you this work, right? That's what happens. It's just if you a man, especially when I start giving out this work and then there's no there's no rebuttal. There's no fight back. It's, oh, that's a good idea, but hold on, right? Hold, see, not now, now we got an issue. You see what not I'm me. saying? Not me. So, not me. Who's that, Black Sun? Yeah, it's Black Sun. Um, yeah. The thing, see, I, I I hear everybody what they said. Yanga, get back on the panel because <laughs> I've, I've kicked back and heard everybody. The difference between the Mississippi campaign and what you said, A9, you specifically said you have to abide by the laws of Yahshua and the Bible and all that. Angel said you don't have to have no religion. Now, Malcolm X said, I'm clean you, you can, hold on, 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 hold I said those that live within the gates of whatever we create. Okay. That's why I told you this thing is not about colonizing. But you don't seem to listen. So I'll say it to you again. My goal is for those of us that want to participate in the biblical ideology, then we have our own little space. Kind of like the Amish. I know you heard of them, right? I ain't saying we finna be Amish, so don't go crazy with that neither. But what I'm saying is, those of us that want to participate and have our biblical ideology, we can do so. That's why I told you sovereignty for us exists in a little piece of area that we create. And in doing that, it now permeates. If you say I'm not practicing those biblical laws, but I will exchange economics with you, guess what? That's why I just told Angel, let's exchange economics. I'm not trying to force you into a Torah theocratic theocracy. Why? Because I told you, I believe that my system is strong enough that in time to come, you'll want to come to it. I don't got to force you to do anything. Please, when you talk about my ideology, talk about it correctly. Please continue. <clears throat> okay. And your ideology in Revelations, does it not say that Yahshua will come and all knees will bow? Does it not say that? Yes. And it also says in Isaiah 60 that they will come to the light of our rising. You cannot take the Bible and proof text. I am an actual biblical scholar. This is called biblical hermeneutics. So this is why you can't take Revelation and just use that at the end of the book, which is what the Euro Gentile has done to you. This is Eurocentric Christianity that has been placed upon you. This is not Eastern biblical thought. So the problem with what you're saying is you're still attacking the white man. We're not telling you that we have thrown off all semblance of Hellenization. We have no more desire to participate in a Eurocentric Jesus Christ. We don't worship him. We don't bow down to him. We say that he is uh, a man sent from God. And when I say sent from God, I ain't talking about no virgin birth. I mean, he had his mind right I get a word from in? the beginning. And he knew how to go through and work with the people and free them from the oppression of the Roman system, which is the same thing many of us now understand as an ideology. Okay, so no what, I was, what I was saying is I heard these from Hebrew Israelites, not the white man. I've heard this from Hebrews, okay? You're the only Hebrew talking this kumbaya the peace stuff I'm where the, the rest of the Hebrews are talking about world domination. 
That's a fact. That's a fact. Thus saith the Lord. You hear from every faction, every faction that I've heard from. Now, you talking on your own little island, that's you, Anon. But the rest of the Hebrew, majority of Hebrews are talking about taking over world domination, enslaving people. Man, hell no. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm saying as a black nationalist, fuck that. And if you come across, you can be on your little island and be, you, know, you come across that goddamn border with that fuck shit, you, you're taking you down. That's what the fuck I'm saying. So you, you, what you're saying, it sounds all nice and dandy. Don't cross that goddamn border like that Bible tells you to. Because that Bible just told tells you to goddamn hold, wait, that's ex- hold on. See, now, now, now you just made a mistake. Israelites. Hold on, hold on. You just made a mistake. So now let's get into it. This is why I tell you, you need to don't talk about the Bible. You don't know what you're doing. So first you just said that every stop and listening because first you said every Hebrew is like talking about world domination, but then you said just like the Bible, the Bible said, said if you cross hold on, but then you just said the Bible says if you cross our borders, then it's on. See, you just agreed with no, me in your second you, statement. No, no, no stop, it, stop, stop, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. See, if don't panic. About, don't panic. No, no, no. If you talk about world domination, you're talking about crossing our borders. Fuck that shit, dude. You can tell that shit to somebody else, ain't on. I, you know, you're not going to do the goddamn uh, three car money up in here. No, it talks about world domination. The Bible does. So now what's your response? That you that? don't, you're so angry that you don't understand how to quote. Yeah, because the Bible's a goddamn threat. So look, you won't, you won't listen. Uh, you, I, I, I just told I you. This shit. I'm telling I you, just told you. No, you told me, but fuck what you're saying. I'm telling you what the Bible says. And, and, and when I'm saying that the Mississippi campaign is not coming with that Bible bullshit, that's some bullshit. Malcolm X said, "If you you can be an atheist and be a black nationalist, the minute you come with that Bible, that's a theocracy. That's no longer black nationalism. And as long as you stay on your borders, then you're good. If you come across our borders, we're taking you fucking out, straight up, straight up." Well, damn. You done? <laughs> you done? Okay, bet. Here's your problem. Since you're so angry, your system will never get you borders. You know why? Because you'll always stay separate because you think you know everything and you refuse to look and work with the people who have a system that's actually been built. See, brother, I'm ready for all the anger. I'm ready for all of my Hebrew Israelite brothers. All you got to do is allow me to finish. All you got to do is allow me to finish. If if you don't want me to talk, brother, if you don't want me to talk, I can go have dinner with my family. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. And leave you to your 13 viewers. Go ahead. Appreciate you. Now. The problem is, is I'm ready for all of that smoke. You don't read Greek. You don't read Hebrew. You don't read Arabic. You don't talk to any of these people that are overseas. So, for instance, when I take you back to Isaiah 60 and then you keep running to Revelation, you miss the entire conversation because the Bible is more than just one verse. So when you want to talk about global or world domination, it's because we actually put things in place to work and save the people. And then they raise their hand and say, we want to know more about your God. That's the Bible. And in doing so, those that refuse to, it says it won't rain. Now we can go into the esoteric understanding of that, or I could keep it basic for your simple brain. Well, so like back this. to the whole entire. It's like this. If you want to be a Hebrew is like, then go with that man's fanatical plan. Okay. Because he talks about my feeble brain. My feeble brain can comprehend that biblical theocracy is not good for black people. Just like it ain't good for Arab people. It's not good for any human being to live by. That shit that he's talking is some fanatical, goddamn, they're utopic shit. There is no fucking utopia. At least Angel had the, and MD had the decency to say, no, it's not a perfect environment, but you're going to work this and that. But A9 gets up here and switches up. Switch it. I tell you what, Gaynon, go 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 have dinner with your family because I'm about to goddamn run the goddamn camp here now because we ain't doing that fucking word salad bullshit. Hey, goddamn hey, hold up, theocracy. hold up, Black Salad. I okay. wanted to get some clarity from the brother. Okay, though, okay. Man. Go ahead, go ahead. Yo, he okay. big right. mad. He big, big mad. He because big, big mad because he ain't. Go ahead, go ahead, okay, go ahead. okay, watch this. So then, so so answer, so answer me then, and I'll answer everybody else's question because notice I'm the only person that's volunteering to stand here and be grilled about my plan. Over and over because and over it's again. It's theocratic. Whatever, it's brother. Theocratic. Call it what you want to call yeah. it. So now back back to the That's point, though, right? Because we're not. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, man. Go ahead, bro. Hey, it's good, bro. You yeah, upset. Go ahead. Bullshit. Get it out. And I'm calling out the Ooh. goddamn con game. 
I'm calling Get out the goddamn con game. You try to agree with Angel and this and that. No, it's not the same thing as Angel as a, a Mississippi. Because he said I, I never said it. I never right. said it's the same. Right. I never I never said it was the same. But you try to you try to you try to miss. No, 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 no. See now, see. now, now can I now can I finish? Can I speak uninterrupted real quick? All right, appreciate you. So now you see how whenever he says something and then I press what he says, that statement is retracted or is backtracked. That's because he's speaking from emotion and not from actually being boots on the ground involved in what's going on. And unfortunately, that's what many of our brothers and sisters do. You're trying to hold me accountable to something that internet Hebrews are okay, saying. You're not gonna, okay, you're not going to, you got, I'm not going to paint a narrative because you don't know what the fuck I do. I, I, I've talked to many Bro, what's the, what's the problem, bro? On the, the what's problem the, what's is the problem, bro? your theocracy. Your theocracy. Why can't I, why can't I talk, bro? Why can't I get my point across? Because like, what, you're, you're long. You're attacking. Okay, okay. I tell okay. You what, Go go have dinner with your family, brother. Go. Thank <laughs> thank you for showing up. Thank you. Because so you want me to leave your panel? No, don't you gotta go have din dinner? So now you ask me to leave, right? No, I'm saying, dude. Hey, look. So this is what we'll do. Hey, no, this this what I this what I tell you. Hey, this what I tell you. This is the you know this is the last time I come over. You talk about emotions, but y'all. You be yelling too. I'm just matching your energy, sir. I'm just yeah yeah. I got you. No no. But what I'm okay. But my even with my energy, I'm never belligerent. I'm always making sense. Not belligerent, really. Is that I'm so, always making know, sense. Okay, well that's your I'm interpretation. Always making sense. I'm making sense too. Y'all I mean, dominate the world. Hey, that's watch this. I'm, look, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you how I know I'm making sense. I'm gonna tell you how I know I'm making talking, sense. Hold on, you just hold have, on. You're talking the Greek and Hebrew shit. What do they do? They conquer. Okay, whether the Greeks and Hebrews believe in conquering at the end of the day, just like every other fucking nation at the end of the day. All right. So all that shit that you're saying about the shit that you want to do is fucking colonize. That's what the fuck you want to do, because there's no place on earth left, especially in Africa, that you can say, oh, this is my land. No, it's controlled by somebody. Somebody's capitalism at the end of the day. And I'm going to say, at least the Mississippi campaign has room for people. OK, you know what? We have room. and You don't have to bring that religious book. You don't have to be religious. And that's what I liked about the Mississippi campaign. You ain't got to be religious. OK, that sparked mine. You said you have to buy by the laws, buy, buy, buy this and that and Yahweh and this and that, all that bullshit. OK, just keep that in your sector. But your Bible says to conquer the whole fucking world and y'all will self uh, prophetize that shit and force that shit like every fucking religious fanatic. Every fucking religious fanatic. And you, you talk that calm shit, but you're a fanatic your goddamn self. You for that's why I fucking you say, oh, I'm emotional and get upset. Yeah, because I know what the fucking plan is with the fucking Hebrews. I've heard it from many camps, man. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk that mm -hmm. crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk that crazy shit. You're not gonna goddamn goddamn pull a con game on my show and think that I'm everybody that I'm agreeing with it and don't check you on that shit. I'm just here to check that fuck shit that you're talking. That Bible shit is some fuck shit. For black people and every other goddamn people, because it sh it has a fucking elite system, it has a monarch system, and you talked about goddamn people gleaming coming on here eating off the goddamn floor and shit. What the fuck are you serious? Are you this fucking serious? That's a fucking Can I respond now? No, I'm, I'm not respond? done yet. I'm not done yet, dude. I'm not telling you, your fucking shit is a goddamn caste system. And A9 mm -hmm. and his family will be at the top while everybody else is gleaming. That's what the fuck you said. That's what the fuck you said. I didn't say any of that. You, you, you I didn't say any that. of that. Dude, you're cutting me off. You're, that. Cut, you're cutting me off, brother. You're cutting me I off. I just said I didn't hey, say that. You're lying you're on me. Off. Hey, hey, the hey, Bible, Black Side. Your Bible is, talks about a goddamn caste system. Black Side, yeah, for, go ahead, just man, for the audience and, and for myself, right. I want I want A9 to re, uh, 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 restate what he meant when he said that as far as the land goes, him and, and, and the people that uh, uh, aspire to tend to be with the uh, law, statutes, and commandments. That, all right, hold on, hold on. Let, let me, I want to make sure you tell me if I'm saying this correct or not. So it'll, it'll be a separate uh, part of the land that's getting yes, built with yes. infrastructure that's, that's specifically for Israelites. The, no, am I no, saying that on. right? So not separate part that's getting built with infrastructure. That's the part where I differ. So so let me explain this to you right now, how this is working with the tribal chief that I'm working with in, in Zimbabwe, right? So this is this is real world. This is not just me talking, right? So what we've done is we've created a system with him where they now have a borehole, right? They are now building up a reception center. So now we can bring in 
leaders, not just Israelite leaders, but leaders from around the world that would like to come and have a conversation on how to build a stronger, better believer community of those that do believe in the Bible or those who say, you know, I don't necessarily agree with what you're saying, but I do want to join hands with you and work with you economically. So it's not. So, for instance, what we're doing in Zimbabwe, they have their little sector. We're building that sector up. So then that way, now we have enough food and enough goods to be able to give to people. When the brother talks about the gleaning laws, as I told him, what this would look like now would be more 21st century, right? It would be more, oh, you, you're you not a slave, but if you were poor, right? Let's say you had a bunch of money, you made a bad business deal, and now you have nothing. You lost everything. Yes, we will have resources available for you to at least sustain your basic needs. And then as you start to recover and build yourself back up. And did to serve them. If no, have, now if you chose to work for somebody, then that's your choice. Right. I'm not talking about, oh, you my slave. I'm talking about, OK, if I own a business, let's say I have a truck driving company. You lost all your money and we're actually doing this with a brother that is a part of my organization. Now we're creating a situation where you can come in, you can drive one of his trucks, build your money up. And within two years, you will now be able to get your own truck and be your own independent operator. Right. That is that's one of the plans that we're working on. Right. We have a two year, I think he said a two year, five year and a 10 year plan. I'm waiting for him to bring it all to me so I, I can OK it and then I can bring it to the public. See, the problem is, is when Black Sun starts to go off and starts yelling, he's not listening to what I'm saying. He's listening to what other people are saying. And this is why I'm one of these Israelites that challenge a lot of what this was being said. Right. Just because I don't have the large platform yet, by the way, doesn't mean that I'm not out here working and challenging the, the narrative that's out here. Right. I'm ready to be called a coon and a sellout and all of that stuff because my track record in life for real speaks for itself. I'm not worried about it. All right. The so let problem, me ask you this. All right. Go ahead. No, go and, fi go and finish no, up. No, no. You good? You good? No, I, I, I just want to answer specific quick. questions. Yeah, I just want to. Okay. So let's say I come in and, and, and I'm already uh, I, I, I'm already garnered with infrastructure and, I, and I'm ready to build like, mm -hmm. like hand in hand with y'all. Mm -hmm. How does how does that process work? Like, a, am I able to to uh, stay on the same land in which I'm help building the infrastructure? Yes, if you have a piece of land, yes, you can build that land. Now, the, so let's so let's talk about once again how this works. And I'm just gonna give you all the full goods. We're working on a thing called Yah City, right? This is something that I'm personally working on. And so the way Yah City would work is, of course, we would go and build um, what you would call a theocratic city, right? Where we live in this city, right? And then those who want to come and be a part of that city is no different than being in America, right? You would have to follow these laws. With the exception of, at first, you know, there is no, you got to come and do all of this worship and everything. You just got to understand on the Sabbath, this entire city shuts down, right? On the Sabbath, we don't do no buying. We don't do no selling. We're not running around here killing, raping, murdering. If you can follow those rules, then you can live within the gates of the city, right? But make no mistake, like, if you don't want to live by those rules, no, you can't live in that city. But we will help you build a city. If you want to economically yoke up and work with us and you want to build your own structure outside of where we live, we can economically build and work. And we'll send workers if you're going to employ them, right, the, the entire situation. There's nothing that's saying I wouldn't help you build a city, right? But if you saying, oh, I hate everything about what you're doing, F your God and F your deity. Yeah, fam. Like, yeah, no, that's not wisdom. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm never going to join hand in hand and somebody going to say, F your system, F your God. Why? Nobody wasn't saying F your system. Bro, that's all God. you do, bro. No, 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 what are you no, no, talking? No, no, did you no, not no, just no, hear no, everything you, you said? Impose, when you impose it, fuck Okay, God. allow me to finish talking to Angel real shit. quick. You're out of control, bro. Just let me finish talking to Angel real quick and I'll get off your panel. I'm going to clear your panel for you so you can do all the extra you want to do. So okay. this is what I'm saying, Angel. And I would love to build with you in private so I can expound this more. Because now we move into the point of, and, and yes, I'm calling you swine, black son. I'm casting pearls to swine, right? You, you refuse to hear anything I say. You ain't gonna slick diss me like that. <laughs> you ain't gonna do that. <laughs> right, we ain't gonna do the slick shit. We not gonna do the slick shit. We not gonna do the slick shit. Disrespectful on the slick shit. We not gonna do that. So, if you want to get a hold of Angel, Angel and MD are available. So you know, 
Angel, give out your information so he can come to your show because he's not going to come and call me a goddamn swine, oh bitch ass nigga. Whoa. My name is not goddamn swine, dumbass motherfucker. I would bitch slap your goddamn ass. Shit. Calling me swine, dude. What the fuck? Trying to slick this me. That's what these niggas from Northern California goddamn do. They come on here with this slick pimp shit and think that I'm supposed to be calm about the shit. Nigga, I would, man, I wish. I, Boy, I wish you would say some like shit like that in my face, man. These internet motherfuckers. God damn. And it's like, oh, you only got 12 views, dude. This doesn't pay my goddamn bills. I do this for fun, you bitch ass nigga. Right, right, right. I keep telling people, dude, I do the same thing this man is doing. He owns his own truck. I own my own truck. So I give two fucks. How many people come in here? If it's two or 200, Cool, it's still a hobby. It does not, I do not rely on this shit. So y'all go on with that fuckery. Maybe y'all fuck niggas, A9 and all these other people that keep talking about my views. Maybe y'all are dependent on it. I'm not dependent on it. It doesn't fucking feed me or pay my bills. This is something I do for fun. I enjoy talking to Angel. I enjoy talking to MD. I enjoy talking to Inyame. I enjoy talking to people who don't come with that slick shit and goddamn try to goddamn slick diss me and shit. My name is not fucking swine, you bitch nigga. And you would not say no shit like that to my goddamn face. Mm. So keep it 100 on the panel. Like you talk to me like you would on the goddamn panel because I would call you a bitch nigga in your goddamn face. And I'm 6'3", 250 pounds, and I would back that shit up. Dumb nigga, but sorry y'all had to see me go into gorilla mode once again. But you're not going to come on the goddamn arena and goddamn diss me. You are a goddamn fanatic. That Bible, you got one goddamn nigga shucking and jiving, and you got the rest of these motherfucking camps talking about what they're going to take over the world. They're going to enslave people. They're going to goddamn, they're going to goddamn do all kind of fucking, they're going to be worse than the white man. That's what the fuck they yeah. said. Majority of the camps. And Anon and MD ain't never said no crazy shit like that. That's why I said, okay, I like the Mississippi campaign because nobody ain't talking crazy about slavery and all this <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Enslaving people and, you know, and the Lord shall come out and, man, bullshit. Your Bible says, goddamn, G yo, Yahoo, Yahweh, whatever the fuck his name is, will come and every knee shall bow. Now, when I hear every knee shall bow, that's a fucking threat. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get emotional because you're fucking threatening me. Fucking, I will take your ass down. It's just that simple. Right. It's just and, that and, simple. And, I and also, that I really didn't hear anything. I was I was trying to get him to go into the political footprint on how everything's gonna work. Right. Like I, I didn't hear that. You know what I mean? No. And and that's what I was trying to get to. And and that goes back to my point. Like, if we're not moving on a political footprint, like I don't see. You know, like, like everything is economics, and and for somebody to say, like the system needs to be brought down, and yet you want to build off the system to create something else. Like, I don't. That's the part that I don't understand. You know what I mean? Right. And right. and you know, it, it it ain't the bash what he was trying to create. Is that I I'm trying to understand what the political footprint is, and I and I didn't hear that at all. You know what I'm saying? That's that's hear, my whole thing. Right. I didn't hear it either. I've heard you guys plan, and I've heard it. You know what I'm saying? When, when we talk, and uh, shout out, I'm giving a shameless plug to the other show that me, and not only did we, uh, me and uh, MD and Angel did, but also go to Angel's channel where we build. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, this, this nigga, Anon, is doing a bunch of word salad, which he puts a, a, you know, a bunch of long with it. No, we didn't do that. We got straight to the point. Nobody want to hear all that grandstanding and, and, and long winded this nigga. They will fucking cut your head off, nigga. If goddamn you talk about motherfuckers gleaming, niggas get their damn fruit. This nigga, this nigga told us this. Y'all can go back in the show. He told me and Yanga, oh, well, you know, some of the people, they can just get fruit off the ground. Now, I'm a vegan. And I'm like, that sounds like some crazy <laughs> ass shit. <laughs> I don't even oh, eat meat. Man. I don't even eat meat that sound crazy to me. <laughs> they will take you, they will separate your head from your body, you dumb nigga. Talking that crazy shit. These are niggas we talking about. I can't even convince people to go vegan. Are you talking about picking up fruit off the ground? <laughs> and and, and <laughs> if, if, if they not talking about doing this in like stateside or somewhere else. 
<laughs> he talking about doing this in Africa and eventually, as if he goes by the Bible, the Bible talks about world domination. It just so, just so, sum it up. So what do you think the, 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 the tribal people over there that's all over there, what do you think they're going to do? <laughs> well, like like nothing up said, and you can correct me, nothing up. They have a different interpretation. So Anon, with his fucking arrogant ass, is gonna say, "Oh no, we know the scriptures. They will take your head clean off your goddamn shit. clean, clean off, clean yeah. off. Your head will be off, and your body you just be twisted <laughs> with blood spilling everywhere, dumb nigga. And you're and gonna get some people fucked up over there. I've been yeah, to fucking and- Africa. I've been to fucking Iran. I've been to Saudi Arabia. I've been to Bahrain." And I've been and, to fucking Qatar. Talk that dumb shit to somebody else. Go ahead. Yeah. Man. And that's what I mean by putting the cart before the horse. Like, you <laughs> not not even stateside. You want to go to a different country and try yeah. to and try to build a, 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 on an economic footprint. Hey, them people over there ain't having that. Hell no, they not having that. MD. Like you'll you'll have a better chance building on a let let's say let just to give an example, <laughs> let's say you want to go to another country. And you want to build like you know whatever you want to do over there. Your best bet, and, and if it was me, my best bet would be okay. Let me see what moves I can make politically to make sure don't nobody fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm, I'm worried about my my myself at that point. Like as far as a, am I gonna be okay before we start? You know what I'm saying? Like so it's and it's the same for the U.S. Like we like. When you talk about a protected class, we're not looking at me saying that black Americans should, should be a protected class based off of what somebody else said. Once it's written, I don't give a damn who read it, who 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 wrote it. Once it's there, us as the people that it was meant to be for must gatekeep it politically. That's the thing that we haven't done since the annals of, of history That's from right. emancipation all the way to now. All the things that we supposed to have that spent for us specifically was never gatekeep. We didn't do it. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? To to your Civil Rights Act, to your to your uh, Equal Opportunity Act, to your Immigration Act. We never gatekeep. We didn't do anything. That's the issue. So when you talk about these things not uh, uh, helping us specifically, it's because we didn't gatekeep it. We didn't make sure that it was supposed to help us specifically because we didn't have the political power in place to do it. Right, right. <laughs> so so if you have the political power in place, that's when you start to gatekeep it. That's that's what we're trying to do right now with the Mississippi campaign. If right. it would if it would have been done after emancipation, we wouldn't even be talking right now. Exactly. Exactly. It's very simple. So you, so I don't, you don't think they tried after emancipation? No. Tell me who did. Tell me who did. Didn't didn't we have people in Senate? You you had yeah. we had dozens of people in Senate. Right, yes, right, we did. right. So so just because there's a law that says we're protected, those people don't they don't go by the law. Did did those did those uh state state uh senators and congressmen go by that law? The black ones that we had, did they? Yeah, yeah. They I, tried I, I, can, I can, who, uh, g- give me some give me some proof. Cause I can give you a couple of proof that they did. How how they didn't go by the law? What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> so so what what you're trying to imply is that the black state senators and that were in the state houses tried to enforce the laws that were meant for us after emancipation. Am I correct? Correct. I'm telling you to give me specific names. I can give you specific names that not only didn't do it, but they didn't give a damn if it was there or not. Wait, what? They didn't give a damn. So you saying they had the power? I, I, I'm telling you, it was coons in the state house. Is what I'm telling. Oh you. no, I, I agree. I agree with that. But just because there was coons doesn't mean that the system is set up for the people who are in power now for them to maintain power, and and trying to use that system to get them out of power, I think is is a contradiction. So again. The people that we had after emancipation that were in these state seats, if they weren't, if they were not even trying to attempt to uh, uh, establish the precedents in the laws that were meant to help us, 
What what do you expect? Okay, how would how would they how would they enforce it? Even, okay, let's let's say they wasn't coons and they they tried to enforce it. What I, what what recourse would they have had if nobody no, followed those laws that they gave? I because can't answer the that question on the because book. it didn't happen. I can't right. answer that. Right, right. I agree. I agree. It didn't happen because the, the, the way that the laws are written, the people that, that have power will always maintain power under the current laws. All right, give me an example of, the, uh, of that then. A example is 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 white wealth in America is it continues to grow. No, no. What I'm asking you is like, give me an example of a, a, a bill or a precedent that was written to be uh, in protection of us, but how it was written actually did what you say is doing. A bill that was written for us. Yeah, but yeah. So you just said that the white wealth in the country is. Part of the reason that, uh, so all right, I'll give an example. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to give you a good one. I I, I want to give one the, the Homestead Act. The Homestead Act one didn't it have nothing to do with us. No, I know it didn't have nothing to do, but I'm saying, no, no, some of it, some of it was, some of it was prominence to the soldiers of the Civil War. Okay, and they didn't get it. Nor did they descend it, but it benefited those European families. You see what I'm saying? And that wealth from from that homestead at that wealth has a great deal to do with why Europeans, just the average European, have so much wealth. <laughs> So that, that was the point I'm making, that their wealth and their power has already been established. There's nothing within the current law, nothing within the Constitution that will give us the ability or the power to equalize that wealth. And it is, it is that wealth that keeps them in power. Okay. All right. I got you. So my bad. I, I, I was on mute. It was a truck backing up right here. Oh, okay. All right. So... You mentioned the Homestead Act. Yes, there was an amendment in the Homestead Act which granted uh, black soldiers after the Civil War land. N no part in that amendment did it say that that was their land. No part of it. It said, it said the, in, in the amendment itself, it said that they would be able to uh, uh, establish uh, uh, toil and, and, and basically tend that land for a percentage of pay. It was basically sharecropping. That's basically what it was. And you had other amendments as well. You had uh like special order 15 and you had the uh 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 Freedmen's Bank of Trust. You had a lot of things that gave us land to tend and make a couple pennies off of, but that doesn't specifically benefit us. And and part of that is is, is the reason that we don't have wealth in this country today. I agree. But I'm saying something specific that was for us. Affirmative action. Affirmative what? action was specifically for us. And if you study what? affirmative action now, how they how they used affirmative action. Affirmative action was specifically written into place to uh, end the disparity between black and white people. But what they did is they found loopholes in it. And they I, hired I, women other other minorities, but affirmative action was specifically written for black people or with black people in mind. Apparently, just uh, like well, what I, I, I gotta stop saying, you said black people in mind. You have to understand the wording of the act. But that's what I'm telling. But that's what he's saying about the law. There is no law in effect now that they're not going to find a loophole because racism is intrinsic in the American system. So even when we have seen that laws should have been in effect for us, they were put in effect for us. A lot of the civil rights laws were directly put in effect for us. Not only did it take damn near 10 years for them to implement those laws put in effect for us, like Inyame was saying, who's going to enforce the law? 
But secondly, once the laws were put in effect and enforced, you know, which got Kennedy's ass head knocked off for even thinking about signing the laws in there. But once they were enforced, the white America found a way to still make sure black people were the last to receive the benefits of these so-called laws. That's why I say I don't believe you can replace the system within the system. You know, like uh, Inyame would say, you can, they have, if we don't accept the fact that racism is intrinsic and intrinsic part, it is interwoven in the fabric of America, then I think we're just fooling ourselves. Yeah, well, uh, don't you know, nobody this disagree is, with that. Nobody disagree right. with so that. So this is what I want to know about, and, and I will, um, you know, uh, Brother Snuff Nuff, accept that debate because here's what I'm not hearing about Operation Exodus, Mississippi campaign. I don't hear anything different. I hear us moving to one spot, but maybe I'm going to go back and watch the old video. I don't hear where there's any difference than what we're living under now. Why should I leave Cleveland to go to Mississippi? Why to have the same treatment, but just have it have black people treat me like that? I mean, that's so the only why, thing I why hear you guys keep saying that? Because I, I, I don't, I'm trying to figure out why are we going to Mississippi? Like, what's in Mississippi? What are we doing no, why, different no, in why, Mississippi why do we're not doing anywhere? Well? Why do you keep saying that black people are going to uh, systematically break you down the same way? Why, why, why do you keep saying that? And, and what makes you believe because you're you Because you're using, because the way the system is set up, it has to have a lower class. It has to have a disenfranchised, dismarginalized class. The only thing that we'll be doing is black Republicans and black conservatives or whoever in this current system is will be upward mobility. It won't be collective upward mobility because the system is not designed like that. The system is the capitalism, the way America practices, is designed for only a very small percentage to, re to reap the majority of the rewards. It's, it's designed like that. So that bottom and class, so why saying. does that bottom class have to be you? Why does the bottom class have to be black people? Yeah. If, if we move, because if we're all moving, I'm a first, the first thing is this. I'm assuming if you're calling for Operation Exodus Mississippi, aren't you calling for black people to go there? I'm calling for black Americans to go there. And, and okay, not all. black Americans, right. So if black Americans go there, then the oppression, then I'm assuming from that, that the majority of the population will be black Americans. It, so it's, it's the majority it's of the population. The majority is, now. It's 45%. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. It's 45% and nothing has changed. That's what I mean. Are we coming in with a different plan? Or are we just all going to Mississippi for a picnic? We're, that's we're what not, I mean. What, what, what is changing? <laughs> I mean, as, far, I mean, as far as, you keep saying the system, as far as the system, nothing at all. And and I okay. that, and that's okay. coming from somebody that believes that this current system, especially in 2022, this mm -hmm. current system can be mended. Okay. In favor I of Black Americans, that. I do believe that, and that's what means okay. different. Right, right. I will take that. I don't know which one of you guys did, but I will take that challenge. I will take that challenge because basically it's a debate. I, I, I didn't, I didn't um, challenge you no, to no debate. I guess okay. uh, Talik did. Yeah, no, no. yeah, to brother Talik. I'll take that because basically to me it's the challenge of revolution versus neocolonialism. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we have too many examples of revolutions, people that have taken over uh, and come in and still use the same system and it be disastrous. Ghana is one of them. And I love Kwame Nkrumah, but even he said, when we got our independence, I should have changed the damn system. Because neocolonialism is the order of the day in Ghana when, when he first took over power. So it was more a uh, puppetry power. They still wore the wig. Like in Ghana, they still wear the damn wigs. Their education system was the same. Their economic system. So nothing had changed except for black people with black face. So, you know, that's what I mean. When I would, that's why I would take that debate. Unless there is a real significant change, or we're moving in the direction of real change, I, you know, I don't. I guess you and I debate disagreement will be the same. I don't see advancement for black people in the way that the system exists now. As a collective, I agree. You may have an opportunity. There may be a few black son may have an opportunity. And there may be a few more other black people that have an opportunity. But as a whole, I don't think the system.
really gives a damn about uh, us to the degree to even where they would have considered a fact of us in ever being fully a part of America. We're denizens. Black people in America are denizens. All right, check this out. Okay, so Mm -hmm. we're talking about Mississippi, right? I just told you 45% black. And and we know a majority of that yes. is like in the capital, Jackson, and you got Meridian and all these places. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, it's estimated sixty five to seventy percent of the agricultural labor in Mississippi is Mexican. That's a crying shame. But the but the so, majority of the population is black. That's a problem. Pretty much, I'm gonna have to switch channels. Yeah. So with that being said. I, I understand neocolonialism. You you you're setting up a government that's basically mimicking what you already have. Uh, let, before I oh oh he back oh he he out of here damn. So anyway, what I'm saying is this. He's, I, I coming, back, at, he's coming back. MD, he's coming back. Okay. Yeah, coming so, back. So us as Black Americans, when you're talking about changing the system, you really gonna have to give me like a bullet point explanation of what you mean by changing the system. And if you're talking about changing the system, is it going to be black originated? That's what I want to know. Because when you talk about, you know, so I, I believe it, and Yami said something about socialism, or that may have been uh, Yanga. And we talk about the history of socialism. Yeah, yeah, you had, you know, uh, uh, Marxist Soviet Union, and, you know, you had things that, but we know there's other types of socialism. It has to be something original. You know what I mean? I, me personally, I don't believe in socialism. I, I, I don't I don't understand how a nation can prosper like as far as everybody collectively in socialism. That's just me. Like I'm I ain't trying to, you know, if, if you could explain it to me, that'd be great. But when we talk about Mississippi, I just told you 65 to 70 percent of the agricultural labor there is Mexican. And we can only guess what percentage of that is illegal. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking about disaggregating. Mm -hmm. We're talking about disappropriating. Mm -hmm. We're talking about delineating. And bringing a a, like I said, I'm a reparationist, so don't none of this matter if we can't get a foothold economically in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in terms of disappropriating and where the funds are going, we can all succeed if we get an economic and a political footprint. The footprint is the key, and I want people to understand that. Like, I don't care what system you want to use. Like, if you don't have a footprint in that system, meaning how it's going to work for you and your people, none of it matters. You know what I mean? Right. But go yeah. ahead. Oh, I know what I yeah. wanted to ask you. So, what, what's your what's your lineage? If you don't mind me asking, what's your lineage, you know what I mean? Not in Yame, but Yanger. My lineage? Yeah, yeah. What what do you mean? Like like where your people come from? Uh Florida and Kentucky? Is that what okay. you mean? Like immediate like, yeah. like in the uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah immediate uh, lineage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my father, uh my father's people is from Florida and my mother's people are from Kentucky. Okay, so yeah, you black American. So yeah, and, yeah. And, and I say that to say this. Yeah, I say that to say this. Like, because like I said, I don't want to get it twisted. And and also, I want if if anybody got any question to make it seem like, oh, I'm I'm trying to separate this black group from that black group. I mean, I kind of am, because I'm looking mm-hmm. at it from a political standpoint. Right. Like right. All, all all the all the amendments that were supposed to be for us, it was supposed to be like for us. Not nobody mm-hmm. else. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I just wanted to clear that up because a lot, you know, people were asking about it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. Like, I'm a staunch black nationalist. You know, I believe that the black African American, the black man and woman, the melanated black person here in America is its own. Uh, I don't want to say, so what's the word I'm looking for? Is its own type, just like the Jamaicans or Jamaicans. The uh, and you got white people on the island of Jamaica, just like the Puerto Ricans or the Puerto Ricans, uh, the West Indies or the West Indies. And you have white people there. These are African people that have embraced. Uh, I don't care how horrific that uh, colonization was, the enslavement of them as an African people 
brought to where they were, but they had embraced that. They embraced their mixing with the natives and the aboriginals until they've come up with their own identity. And it speaks well for them. Black people, right. in my opinion, practice escapism. We want to be everything but what the fuck we are. And we will argue over semantics. We will take our religion as our ethnicity. Like, you know, I was born in an Islamic household. So for the most part, for the most part, if somebody says, what's your religiosity? Uh, if I had a formal structure, a lot of my formal structure, I revert back to Islam when it's, you know, so, OK, that's a part of it. Uh, but I don't think that that is my that's a personal motivation, inspirational thing. I don't think it speaks to political, social aspirations, you know. But like I said, black people will try to find our in identity in all of these things and not fight to forge a particular identity that is unique for us. But everybody recognizes us as some form of nation because they rob from us. We created jazz. We created hip hop. We give civilization so many wondrous things but since we don't see ourselves as a people they just culture vulture us we sell out or they just come and just take it from us but if you get some from the chinese they will exp uh, explicitly tell oh that's Chinese karate ancient chinese secret you know now you got chinese breakdancing nobody said oh that's black american thing you know you got them doing jazz nobody says oh that's unique to the black african american that gave this to the contribution of civilization. And, and, and that's the type of shit that I talk about. So on that, you and I totally agree. You know, um, I'm, I'm funny when I say black American because how that's taken. But yeah, for the most part, I'm a black nationalist, which means I believe I'm a black African-American or black, not African-American in that sense, but a black African here in America. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, disagree on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think what I do like about the Mississippi campaign is that it's unique for us. I do think our solution should be unique to our particular situation. And I want to say I agree. I think the, the Mississippi campaign is unique. You know what I'm saying? You're not picking up an individual uh, belief system, a theocratic system, or, uh, you know, are I going to be a Hebrew or a Muslim, this and that and the other, or a Christian? You know what I'm saying? It's something that's spoke to me. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm hearing this. It definitely lines up with black nationalism because you take, I have people that try to hijack it and, and put it under their religion and say, oh, but you got to do this and that and the other. And so, yeah, that's the difference that I heard, you know, now I heard the working with the economical part, this and that, but you know, Hey, listen, fellas, man, I've been on way past my time. Enjoyed the conversation. Um, and I'm just going to catch you guys on the flip. I expect for you guys to get back on the panel, man. This is a good discussion. And I love to further it and continue. Definitely. No problem. So man, we, no problem. Definitely, man. With that, I'm, I'm going to shout out. Peace. No, no, we good, man. You know how we get down, brother. <laughs> keep, push, keep fighting the good fight, black man. Keep fighting the good fight. You know, with that, my dear brother. And the good fight is, and let me say this to everybody, the good fight is us brothers and sisters who have come together and really have racked our brain and put our finances and our limbs towards finding a solution for the millions of black Africans right here in America. You know, that's the real deal. So I salute anybody that brings that to a solution. My brother Anonymous, I salute, you know, anybody looking for solutions for our problem, I salute that. We may not always agree on how to get there, but I do like the fact we're trying to get there. All right, man, with that, with that man, I'm going to say everybody peace, and i catch y'all on the flip. Peace, bro. Yeah, peace. 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 And uh, I'm like with Yang. I, I like black people, we're not a, a monolith. We all, we're going to have our different ideas. But at the end of the day, I want to feed my children and leave a legacy to them, basically. Make sure my, my kids eat, make sure they're taken care of, make sure they have a promising future. However, we need to do that, you know, that's for us to sit together and, and, and decide. But that's what I want. And if nobody else wants it, I'm going to fight for it for myself. Because I, I, I think that's the way forward. And, and how the best way to do it is, is going to come through a scientific means, just logically thinking what is the best way. I, I I can live the rest of my life 
with the things that I want, make sure my kids is well educated, well taken care of, and that they have a future. And and that's it. I mean, when we talk about reality, just the basics of reality, throwing away the ideologies of all the different economic systems and everything. What are the best steps to get those basic needs for a black man and black woman on this planet? And uh, I enjoy the conversation, guys. Uh, peace, peace. Thanks, and yummy. Peace, and yummy, man. RMD Angel, y'all want to take us out, man? Oh, yeah, I appreciate that, man. And hey, man, I apologize for the gorilla mode, but I just match people's energy. They bring the bullshit, I'm going to bring the bullshit. We talk intelligent, I can talk intelligent. I've said this before. This is nothing new. You know? So when you come with the rah-rah, A9, I'm going to come with the rah-rah. You know? so, but I don't want to take away from y'all message, Angel and MD, man. I appreciate y'all coming on here, man. And we got to do this again. This is just a start. Yeah, you want you want to go? I, I mean, I, I ain't really got nothing else to say. Uh. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I just say peace to everybody. Um, if anybody, I, I, we are, I believe that we're in a political renaissance right now in 2022, as far as black people here in this country. Like, I, I believe we're, we're starting the steps of understanding who we are politically in this country. I, you know, I, I've seen it. I, I believe we can get there. It's just going to take political literacy. Um, I, I would invite everybody to go to uh, United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen .org. They got information for days to let you know who we are in this country and what we were supposed to be politically in this country. It's still possible. We just have to band together on a political platform and get it done. And, you know, with that, I say peace. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, this was a good, a very good, uh, has some uh, snags or whatever in, in the, uh, in it a little bit, but this was a very good talk. And I look forward to uh, debating Yanga. <clears throat> he's going to make it very easy because, <laughs> because he's made no attempt to really understand. I mean, I have many, many videos out there and, and he hasn't even watched our little five-minute production to basically say what the Mississippi campaign is about. And he keeps rehashing the same old uh, things that I've never even said, you know. I, you know, and I don't know where they're getting this stuff from because the, the five-minute video will even tell you that's not what it's about. You, we tripping off Mississippi, but that's not – but the campaign is really not about Mississippi like that. That's just, that's just a, a, a place to – to start off with, I um, I understand the the the, the term or, or the label or the identity of the black nationalist because I also called myself at one time uh, a black nationalist. The funny thing about being a black nationalist, this mindset has been around a long, long time. How can you be, or even this brother? That wants to go to Israel or Africa somewhere to start whatever. I don't know. This is just me. You have to crawl before you walk. How can you be a black nationalist and you're not a black neighborhoodist? You have you have never taken control or created a black nationalist neighborhood. Even Christian pre preachers. There's a there's a brother somewhere. I think I remember in Philadelphia. His church, if you've ever been to Philadelphia, you know they have long, long blocks. His church on this whole side, this whole block, they done bought all the, the land and the buildings. And uh, so how if you can't control your own neighborhood, how are you going to build a nation? How are you going to call yourself a black nationalist? Is there a black, is there a black nationalist town in America? To my knowledge, I've never heard of a, a black nationalist town or black nationalist city. I tell you something. Right where I live in East St. Louis, Illinois, East St. Louis, Illinois is like 95% black. 
bring your black nationalism and change them. It's 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 to your advantage. It's ninety five percent black. First of all, they're not gonna go for it because again, people don't have the, the the mindset. They're not interested. They just want my city to be better. They're not interested in black power, black nationalism, and, and, and all that kind of good stuff. They're not interested in that. They talk about Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street was Christian. And they didn't run around talking, well, you know, Jesus did this and Jesus. Why is it necessary for us to bring our religion? Even Dr. King. Dr. King didn't run around talking about, well, you know, I'm a Baptist minister, Christian minister. He didn't. Marcus Garvey didn't do it. Marcus Garvey was Christian. Why we have to we promote our ideology? Well, I'm a black nationalist. What they got to do with anything? I'm a Christian. I'm a I, what, what do they have to do with anything? <laughs> what what that is is a turnoff. Because I'm not interested in black nationalism. I'm not interested in Christianity. I'm not interested in your religion. The Mississippi campaign is the best and most realistic solution and option is because it's void i don't care about your sexual orientation i don't care about this stuff i don't control your life only thing i know is all of us as soul brothers and sisters regardless to your sexual orientation wherever you are in life you deserve better that's all i'm interested in there's something i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna end this in the mental health system there's something that's that's called when you want, when you want, when you want it. That's a sign of insanity. That's our main problem. There's something that we personally want. It's really not about the people. When you said black nationalism, you're not about the people because they're not on that kick. So you, so it's not about the people. You out for yourself. When you're talking, the brother that, that's, that's uh, Hebrew Israelite, when you bring up your religion, because that's what you own. That's what you own. You're not really. You're What what the minister Farrakhan always say? You use black nationalism, and you use the this thing that you care about black people, you use that to hide your dirty religion. You have another agenda. There's another narrative behind it. You're a slickster. You're a deceiver. Because if you can get in, you want to bring in your own personal garbage. That's not going to happen with Mississippi campaign. Push you automatically out. I don't want you around me at all. I don't want, we don't want your religion. We don't want your black nationalism. That's not what the people want. They're not interested. And you too impatient to work with the people in order for them to begin to understand your mindset. Because you want what you want when you want it. I want it now. That's why some of us get caught up in rape charges. Because you want what you want. I want it now. And the chick or the man. No. Don't do that. I said no. No means no. I want what I want what I want it. <laughs> okay. All right. Next to you know. Your on national television with handcuffs being charged with rape. It's a sign of selfishness. And we got to get out of that. I look forward to our debate with, with Yanga because he's going to come at us in ignorance. He does not know anything about the Mississippi campaign at all. He hasn't watched no video. He just automatically hears something that he don't like or disagree with. And that's what he's doing on. So he's got an intellectual ass whooping coming, Black Sun. It's gonna be devastating because you're gonna to talk to me in ignorance, and that's the that's bad. When I talk about when I talk about the nation of Islam, I know those teachings. I know Hebrew Israelite teachings. I I, I have a base basic knowledge of a whole lot of stuff. Yanga don't have no basic knowledge of Angel Snow No Seven. And that's why you're gonna get intellectually embarrassed. You're gonna stay on the uh, you're gonna stay on the defensive. I'm gonna keep you on the ropes. Stop.
Come on, uh, Black Sun, take us on out of here, bro. All right. Um, y'all subscribe to Angel's Nupped Up uh, channel. Um, and um, I want to sh- give a shout out to definitely MD, man. Thank you for coming on, man. I know yes, you're at sir. work, working, you know, I, hey, hey, I, I, you know, like I said, we, we don't, we don't rely on YouTube for our income. No. So, you know, I'm thankful to my small amount of people, whoever it is. Exactly. I thank y'all. This is, this is like a hobby to me. It's like playing PlayStation or something, you know? So I, I appreciate Deacon. Um, everybody in the chat, I appreciate y'all for coming out. Because exactly. I mean, this, I, I like, I, I have fun with this. I have fun with this. This is not my bread and butter. Trust me. So, and I like, you know, um, hearing different ideas, but I don't like to be uh, conned. Mm-hmm. I don't like to be conned. And I don't like to be slick dissed either. So, you know, like I said, you know, anybody's welcome to this thing, but you bring the rah rah. I'm gonna bring the rah rah. Like I said, you can go into nigga mode. I'm gonna go into gorilla mode. It's just that simple. You know, That's I could talk. Right, yeah. Best, yeah, I could talk with the best of them, but if you exactly. talk slick, then you gonna you, you gonna get dealt with accordingly. So, with that being said, like I said, I enjoy this conversation. I hope Angel and MD will join us again. I will be um, whenever you invite me on your show again, Angel. I will be there. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you do it live, because your lies, man, I be trying to catch your lies. I be seeing your pre-recordings, but I want to catch your lies. <laughs> I want to catch your hey, lives. Yeah, I'm with that, I, like I want, I want to challenge Brother Tali. Like, I, and and I think it's important to do it mm-hmm. to make people like understand. And, and like I said, I'm willing to help him with it, whichever way that I can. Like you know, I, I be on the road, but. If I'm able, if I'm able to help compile whatever information that's needed, I think it's important for people to truly understand what the Mississippi campaign is. And I know Brother Tali, he say, you know, he he's got videos, and, and people need to go back. But I I think it, it has to be like like pinned down. I think point for point, mm-hmm. every point that's in that uh, five minute video. That's that's specifying the points in the Mississippi campaign. I think it's ne- it needs to be a video done, whether it be something uh, that's a uh, presentation based or just like like how we just right now shooting the breeze, exactly. talking about the specific points in the Mississippi campaign. I believe that needs to be done that way. It won't be any question about what's what as far as what we're trying to do. And like I said, I, I'm not no. I'm not no spokesman for the Mississippi campaign. It's just something that I believe in. Like I you like like I told uh Tali, like I used to be heavy with Ado. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I I even went to the uh uh conference back in 2019. I, I, I was I was with it. That's what sparked me. I before then I wasn't never I was like, man, vote. I don't do no vote. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when they set up Ado's. It, it hooked me, it, it, and and something went off in my brain. Like like, this is what we need to be. Of course, like Ados now, like it, you know, I ain't I ain't rocking with them no more. You know what I mean? But and that that don't take away from the message. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for uh, uh, Utah League to break down point for point each point in that plan, what it means. What how how to articulate it and how to disaggregate it. I think it's important. And like I said, if you need help with it, in whichever way I can help, I'm willing to do it. You know what I mean? Thank you. And I think not only that, MD, I think the uh Angel bring a breakdown will give a practical thought to this. Cause I think when people approach it and come at Angel, they're thinking of a utopia. I'm you know what I'm saying they're coming from this from a religious perspective. And Angel's not selling them a utopia. And so I don't, I think we talked about this before, Angel. Yes, we did. They mad at you because you're not selling the utopia. So, you know, I, I think what the MD is saying, I, I agree with him. I think, it, you know, just give a practical breakdown because, you know, I'm not looking for a utopia. So I'm not going to. I'm not looking for that. I'm a working man. You know what I'm saying? I know we talked about socialism, capitalism. You don't work, you don't eat. That's right. It's just right. that simple. You don't work, you don't eat. I don't understand whatever economic system you got. Everybody's got to work in order to eat. Right. Just, I don't. I don't. I don't care what you call it. 
You don't work your own east. So, like I said, I'm not looking for a utopia. Wherever I, if I go to Mississippi campaign or stay in Georgia, just know I'm going to work mm -hmm. so I can eat. That's right. You know, I'm not going to be on YouTube worrying about how many views I got. I'm going to get out there, get my truck and go work. Now, if I want to go unwind and I'll get on YouTube and shoot the shit with people. But it's not my damn bread and butter. So with that being said, Angel, yeah, I think like MD said, man, I think you should break it down because I think a lot of people, again, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it again, Angel. People are looking for a utopia. I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm not in a religious mindset where I'm looking for this great utopia. And you're not selling the utopia. No. I think that's the problem with these people who have that mindset looking for this perfect world. It's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Even if people agree with you, just like I keep telling people are different. And next thing you know, you don't have civil war in your utopia because right. somebody's going to break out. And, and I mean, that's just how things go because we're different. Right. That's why you have all these factions of religion. It only start off with one. Next thing you know, they start breaking out because people are breaking different and start viewing things different, especially after the original dies off, the original persons who ever created the religious system, once they die off, folks start, well, Elijah Muhammad would have did, nah, -uh, Elijah Muhammad would have did that. Exactly. So how many factions of Elijah Muhammad do we have? We have, what, 10 or 12? Minister Farrell well, not most popular. <laughs> I'm not looking for the Mississippi campaign to feed me. If I come to the Mississippi campaign, I'm working. Yes. Okay, what work have we got available? Okay, I'm going to put my work in. Yeah. It, right. it, it Does the white man control that concept or do <laughs> has human beings been working all their lives to eat? Right. <laughs> I, I don't, that's what I'm, but but again, it's because you're not selling them a utopia, utopia, Angel. They want a utopia. They want this perfect land where they don't have to work. You're bringing them pina coladas and, and, and smoothies, and, and they're kicking their legs up. And, oh, oh, go get me this, Angel. Go get me that. No, that's not going to work. No, we're going to look at you crazy. Right. Oh, no, we got to put work in. We got to get our hands dirty. So, like you said, man, the, maybe it ain't for everybody. It's not. Because I know you guys are working class as far as I know. And that speaks to me as a man. That speaks to me. I don't. I'm not looking for utopia. My parents never taught me about no utopia. My dad. I don't teach my kids about no utopia. Mm -hmm. You don't work. You don't eat. Period. If you don't like that, well then fuck you. Not, not y'all, but I'm just saying whoever exactly. has that utopic mind. Like yo, what the fuck? So yeah. I mean, if you're offended by that, then be offended by that. You don't work. You don't eat. I, I live by that. So, like I said, if I go to Mississippi campaign, go to California, New York, I'm going to work. Yeah. I don't, I don't consider you to work. I don't, I don't know. When I didn't work, I didn't. I damn sure didn't eat. Had a whole lot of bread and water sandwiches. <laughs> so, you know, things is hard, you know. So. Well, and, and I'm going to say this because, I mean, I've heard people tonight talk about um, capitalism and socialism. If if people ain't working in whatever system that is, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's not gonna work. So that's that's what Black Sun is down for. You know, you know, I'm 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 you know, I'm for construction, demolition, whatever, get my hands, I'm I'm willing, I'm ready to work, mm -hmm. you know. Put my sons to work. Daughters, if they want to work, put them to work. I believe in working. Yes. You know, and and I you know, I don't know, it's just I don't know why that's so, I don't know. But I think, again, people are looking for utopia. But I wasn't raised that way to look for utopia. So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, Angel. I see it. You know, the uh, the, 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 the savior complex, the, 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 the savior going to come out the sky, Some the, the black messiah. Matter of fact, who, who came up with that talking about, uh, J. L. Hoover was talking about the black messiah. Now, did, did our people come up with that, or was it J. Edgar Hoover that said they're waiting on some kind of black messiah? Who came up yeah. with that? Or, or did, 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 it, was, it was J. Edgar Hoover. See, Thanks. The, the black messiah. He was the one waiting on the black messiah. We wasn't waiting on no black messiah. But that we picked that up because that's part of our mentality, right. looking for this savior, looking for some kind of god or something to come out the sky to save him. And, and they waiting on the black messiah. Right, and I know it was Malcolm. Malcolm might be the, the right. Player, you know? 
Dr. King, right. they thought Dr. King might be the black messiah. I'm going to tell you who the messiah is. The messiah is you. If your ass don't get on the job and take care yeah. of business and change your condition, ain't it's not going to get done. Not right. one man or not one little funky organization is going to come and do a damn thing. You deal, We're dealing with 40-some million people that we work in here with. That's a whole lot of work to deal with, all kinds right. of different minds and stuff. What is what is one savior going to do? And then again, but then again, they have this thing where uh, the savior going to come, and if you don't get on board with the savior's program, they're going to kill you. you know right. <laughs> That's most theocracies. That no, that's all theocracies. Yeah, <laughs> that's all theocracies. Well, I guess I'd be go ahead and get ready for the old hatchet. <laughs> well, and that's all I was saying to Anod. I don't, I don't want people to be misled. They think they get a utopian. You're bringing them to another Iran, or yeah. um, these are real theocracies that I have been to. By the way, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia. I've been to these places. I know how theocracies work and i'm tired of niggas selling this utopia there's no utopia it's it is you're gonna wish that you stayed here in america there's people over there that's trying to get over here because exactly. they can't live by no theocracy i'm talking about muslims that don't want to live in no theocracy i'm telling you no you don't you don't want that you don't want that you know but hey hey, hey bro said Bro said if, on, on on the Sabbath, man, I like I can't sell nothing. Right. You know, like man, hey man, hey. <laughs> that that I can't go for, man. I I, I you know I can't I can't right, go. Right, but you that. might need that money that day. Yeah, you need, yeah. Right. You might want to gas up your truck. Like what? What? Yeah, I can't. I, I can't. I can't move without. No, that's. I can't that's, move without one at all. No, no, that's silly, bro. That's that's. And and and. and he he he's trying to base it, and I understood what he was saying. He was trying to base it off, of, okay, that would be the law of the land. But mm -hmm. in order to have a law of the land, you have to incorporate that land. That's political. If I want to set up, a, if I want to set up a city, like if I go, I got a plot of land somewhere, and I got some people, we we doing stuff. We going by what that county or that state law is. Ain't ain't, ain't no making up nothing. Right. If you want to make something up, you got to corporate that land. That's how, that's political. That's right. the part that I wanted to get into with him. Uh, how you gonna go about doing that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's cool. Like, and and that's what you mean by the utopia complex. You know what I mean? Right. You not like stuff. Stuff has to be done by the book. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care uh, 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 if you got an ironclad plan. It's all got to be by the book. Right. And and that's the point that I want to get. I wanted to get to him, but, you know, it it, it, it popped off. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, but, apologize yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Like, it, it, that's, that's just my point. Like, we're not taking into consideration what it means to play politics. You know what I mean? That's you have right. to play. I don't care what system you're in. You got to play politics. And, and to think that it has to be done through your pocket is just not the case. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and like I said, if if me and Talib and, and you, uh, Black Son, if, if we can compile some information and go through these points, point for point, so people can truly understand what we're trying to do with the Mississippi campaign, I think that's what will set it off. All right, well, um, Andrew, you want to close it out? Tell them your next uh, show, your live. Your... No, right now we're, we're we're spontaneous, and we've okay. done so much talking within the last few days. I'm really talked out. <laughs> okay, well, basically, subscribe and hit the bell yeah. to Talib's channel, man, because uh, yeah. I, like I said, I got to hit that bell because I got to catch your next live. Yeah, Angel started up seven, and they be messing with my channel so much. I hate to give out my links, but you can find me. Angel Snub Nub Seven or the Realities Temple on Earth. You can you can find I'm because I'm not going nowhere. They tear me down. I put something right back up. And also, you can keep up with me on Rumble. Rumble is a new website. I think the Canadians own it or whatever. But uh, yeah, you can keep up with me on, on Rumble and everything that I do. I always put it on on Rumble. 
everything that I do. This right. this will go on, go on rumble. Everything that I I do. But uh, and I and yeah. I saw I saw uh I saw a comment that you put up um Black Sun saying about a channel. I don't have a channel, but I I mainly do my thing on Twitter. Okay. So you can follow me on Twitter at the real MD20. And and if you follow me on Twitter, you can follow that trail as to the people that you need to tap into that's talking politics. You know what I mean? Now you got you got some trash you gotta rummage through. You know what I mean? And if anybody knows Twitter, you know you gotta rummage through the trash before you can get to like something constructive. Mm-hmm. But if you follow me on Twitter at the real MD20, I lead the way. You know what I mean? So that's usually where I am most of the time. But you know, I'm on YouTube looking at people as well. But I I usually do like most of my posts and retweets and, and videos on Twitter. All right, y'all. All right, I want to thank everybody uh in the chat. Including A9. Uh-huh. Peace to you, A9. Peace to you. Just no, no more slick dissing. You can come back on. No more slick dissing. Because you bring that same energy, it's going to be the same thing. But we'll do this another day. Yes. And um, uh, shout out to the rest of the people. Um, what do I got lined up? Uh, be ready to be on call, Angel MD. Cause yeah. it's only Tuesday. I still gotta fill some more days in. <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> okay, okay, man. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. And I think we got a show on Saturday with Nature Made. I gotta contact Michelle Rollins see if she wants to do Fitness Friday. See if she's ready. And Sunday we're gonna have Brother Zero and Brother Zanzi. Shout out to y'all. We're gonna delve more into that music. And with that being said, I am out. All Actually, right. I'm, I'm going to close out reading one of Anon's things. He says, I wouldn't touch <laughs> you. I wouldn't touch you. Up channel with a tear foot fall. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. You, man. you saved me some headache, Anon. You saved me his because you be with the slick shit. You be really with the slick shit. So, hey, I appreciate that. Hey, so, you know hey. what, man? It, it was a point in time where I contemplated uh, like doing debates and stuff, man, but I ain't got the time, man. I, I just don't. You know what I mean? I contemplated it, man, but like trying to join the league and you know, right, SBDL right. and yep. I, you know, I I, I was like, no, I, I ain't got time, man. It's fun, but I, I just ain't got time. You know what I mean? <sighs> <sighs> um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to do commentary for SVDL, so you know people are welcome to come on. But even with that, there's it's, it's hard work. I think y'all figure, you know, I'm no longer a debater. I'm just be a commentator. I mean, it's still oh gosh, that's still some damn work. <laughs> Let me just yeah. say free work at that because people want to come on here and talk about <laughs> my views. Like again, this doesn't make me no money. I laugh at the shit. It's like saying, oh, Black Sun, you don't make money when you go on PlayStation and play video games. No, I don't. I do it for enjoyment to wind down, to wind down from all the crazy driving. MD, you know about the crazy drivers. I have to wind down from all that shit. Oh, yeah. Well, no, you ain't, ain't got to tell me twice. Right. Yeah. I see fatalities on the road, people cutting lanes in the yeah. last minute, dealing with DOT, pulling y'all yeah. over. Yo, this is just my chance to unwind and then people come in talking about black son <laughs> you only got two viewers and i'm like okay i'm doing this for fun so we should we know. should do a since all of us are truckers we should talk about that one day you know just talk about our experience mm-hmm. on the road maybe you know give us give out uh, some of our experience help some of the youngsters that's out there you know just just getting into the business whatever let them know what to expect all that kind of good stuff um Hey, I'm I'm down with it. Yeah. Hey, if y'all down with it, I'm down with it, man. I'm yeah. you know, shit. You know, like I said, it's a hobby to me, man. I'm not just having fun, you know. So <sighs> I mean, cause folks folks really they think driving this truck is like driving a car. You're not driving mm-hmm. you're driving this 40, 
50 some foot trailer or whatever behind you almost got a house behind you and you can't just take this thing anywhere and you can't just stop on a dime no nope. you got all these rules and regulations that you gotta deal with it's, it's not you know and i'm gonna tell you if you're stupid you can't be a truck driver it's a thinking man's game if you if you can't read roll signs you can't read and write or whatever truck driving is not for you i've been i've been a trainer and I had guys that can't read road signs. I don't know how they got their license. They can't read. The, if you can't read road signs, you can't be driving no truck, especially going across the, the you know country. You can't. Uh, you can't. Uh, be no especially truck. when it when it says you're gonna go downhill doing this. Oh yeah. You know? Oh, MD knows about uh, what they call it. Uh, grapevine. Grapevine. Going to California. Yeah, grapevine. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. -woo. I've yeah, had I don't go out there too much more. I, I didn't think the grapevine would be bad. Man, I've had nightmares about the grapevine. <laughs> I still have nightmares about the grapevine. Ooh, yeah, great, yeah, grapevine. I, I could deal with that. I, I don't like what? uh Yeah, I don't think the grapevine like is that bad. Yeah, what? I don't like um like Donna's Pass or or like Vale on 70 in Colorado. I, I man, I ain't Oh, know. hey, do you remember before they, they put the before they uh Remodeled 64 going east. You remember when 64 going east was, was stopped and then it turned into the state road? It'll make you go up the mountains, up the mountaintops, and all that crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, that was probably before my time. Man, I went there. That was my look. I got initiated on 64 State. My first, oh man, that was a scary. And them, them crazy white boys, they going up and down the mountain it's like it ain't about nothing. I mean, it's just flash. Yeah, I'm holding on to the steel wheel black side for dear life, and it was dark. My trailer was knocking down trees. <laughs> it was Angel, you know you traumatize when you still have dreams later. I, I'm years later. I still yeah. have dream. Man, yeah, that, that yeah, it's traumatizing, man. Now, is it me or they're not making the brakes on these trucks? No, they're not. They're not as good as they were. Because I remember back in the day, I used to be able to stop even going down mountains and stuff. I didn't. My brakes didn't catch on fire and be burning up so quick. They're using cheaper material now. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm, my, my uh, crap is burning and it's smoking and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, their excuse was because asbestos and blah, 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 and lung cancer and all this other stuff. But I mean, they, I mean, they, they can come up with a better material, I'm sure. But yeah, like the, yeah, the, it's not the same. So. Yeah, because I'm like, I can't stop yeah. this truck the way I'm supposed to. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's ridiculous. That's very dangerous. Black, Black son, you drive van, don't you? No, you drive, drive van. Uh, no, no, dump truck. Uh, dump truck. Yeah. Oh, you drive dump truck. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I do. I do heavy. Drive baby, baby truck. Okay. <laughs> Black son, I drive the baby truck. <laughs> but a dump truck, Shit, things are heavy. <laughs> yeah, I do specialize, man. Truck, so Black yeah. side's the baby truck. That's Sometimes the baby I, truck. I get contract. Yeah, Sometimes dump, I get I mean, contracts, man. I mean, it's a truck, but you know, you don't have that. 50 foot trailer behind. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah. oh, respect. Yeah, I, I got yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah, still yeah. heavy though. You still heavy. Yeah, yeah, we're still heavy. yeah, but it's not a like a trailer type of heavy. I, I got yeah. you. You're not, you're not 80,000 pounds either. <laughs> yeah, I drive specialized, man. Sometimes, man, I, I gotta get permit, man. I'm over a hundred thousand pounds sometimes. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, damn. Man, be careful about the MD, man. Be careful. About the MD. <laughs> hey, yeah, how, I do. How many, how many I do deer, specialize. How many deer have you guys killed? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't hit quite a. I don't I hit about four, about five. Yeah. Man. But I got a deer guard on this truck, though. I, I I made sure to get a deer guard on it. Yeah. Because they will tear your truck up. Sure yeah, they will. Them. Yes, they will. They are some big animals. They are. They are, and you know, the, a lot of them bucks won't even move. <laughs> Damn sure won't. Yeah, them bucks, yeah, I've seen them in the middle of the night, and they just, you know, they. they but I, they but I tell you what, I ain't stopping. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't stopping. I I used to be a trainer too. I used to tell my yeah. my my students, "Hey man, if something get in this road, I don't care if it's a deer, yeah. If it, if it's a a car with no light, if it's a baby stroller come, don't stop this truck, cause this cause this load is coming forth." Like yeah. I ain't in no van. I'm I'm on a flatbed. This load coming into this truck. That's so right. it's either you or the baby. Which one you want? Damn. That's what I always used to tell my student. I like, hey man, don't stop this truck. I don't care what's in the road. We will we'll just have to deal with it after the wreck. 
Mm-hmm. Don't stop this damn truck. Damn. Hey. Thank y'all again, man, for a yes, great sir. show. Um, we got to do this again, MD, Angel. Man, thank y'all once again. I, I thank y'all. And um, yeah, man, stay tuned. Stay subscribed. And we out. Right. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace. Peace.